good order. I would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Panfilo Lacson, who is uh, online, and uh, Senator Aimee Marcos, who is also online. And later, we uh, were going to acknowledge the presence of uh, physical presence of the Senator Tolentino, who will be coming uh, in a little while. I'm uh, members of the Committee on Finance. This morning, we are going to tackle the proposed budget of the Department of National Defense and its attached agencies, Armed Forces of the Philippines, General Headquarters, Office of the Secretary of National Defense, Government Arsenal, National Defense College of the Philippines, Office of Civil Defense, Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, Veterans Memorial Medical Center. Uh, may I request our committee secretary to please acknowledge our research persons present today? Thank you very much, sir. We would like to recognize the following guests who are present today, headed by Secretary Delphine Lorenzana. Good morning, sir. Uh, Lieutenant General Jose C. Faustino. Morning, sir. Major General Connor Anthony Canlas. Morning, sir. Major General Andres C. Ah, sorry. Lieutenant General Andres C. Centino. Morning, sir. Uh, Major General Nestor C. Enrique Enrico. Morning, sir. Asec Josue S. Gaversa Jr. Morning, sir. Brigadier General Rolando E. Nerona. Morning, sir. Uh, Colonel Ramon Antonio Bello. Morning, sir. Colonel Victorino Patricio. Morning, sir. Pap uh, Commodore Ben Fajardo. Good morning, sir. And Captain Ireneo Matung. Morning, sir. Those who are virtually present, uh, we would like to recognize uh, the virtual presence of uh, USEC Cesar Diano, USEC Reynald M. Mapago, USEC Raymond D.V. Elefante, ASEC Angelito M. De Leon, ASEC Antonio L. Bautista, ASEC Teodoro Cirilo Peralba III, OIC Director Belinda Kayapan, Attorney Norman Daanoy, Engineer Samuel Castro. And from the AFP, we would like also to recognize the virtual presence of uh, Lieutenant Ger General Erickson Gloria, Lieutenant General Ferdinand Partujano, Colonel Edgar M. Candinoza. Uh, Major General Arier Tapulitan, uh, Captain Franklin uh, B. Rotoni, <clears throat> and from the DND bureaus, we would like to recognize the virtual presence of the following Mr. Ernesto Carolina, Mr. Arnold Rafael Y. De, De Paca Kibo. That's all, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, Ikaw Colonel Canlas, you are representing the CGPAP? Opo, sir. Ano ka na? Ikaw, ikaw deputy? Yes, sir. I'm the vice commander, sir. So, of the Philippine Air Force. You're number two? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ikaw, Eriko? 
Uh, I sir, I'm representing the Vice Admiral uh, the Luis S. Bordado, the flag officer in command. I am the Vice Commander of the Philippine Navy, sir. Vice Commander. Sample siya. Uh, he is undergoing quarantine, sir. He, he, he came from abroad. Okay. Ikaw, saan boss mo? Uh, under quarantine, sir, due to exposure, sir. Hindi ka na-expose sa kanya? Uh, hindi po, sir. Nag-peace bump pa naman ako sa'yo, ha? Nag-expose ka sa kanya. Okay, thank you. Yeah. For our presenters today, I hope that uh, we can hear how your agency utilized the 2021 budget, the programs and accomplishments for 2021, the highlights of your proposed 2022 budget, the major programs, projects, and activities to be undertaken by your agencies for 2022. It is also important for us to know your agency's goals in the start of the term of President Duterte and what has been achieved achieved now as his term will end next year. Please note that if your answer to a question during this budget briefing will require you to reveal confidential information, kindly call our attention so we can convene to an executive session. Thank you. For uh, orderly conduct of today's hearing, we will listen to the presentation of each agency before we entertain any question for the concerned agency. Uh, but before I continue, uh, I would like to ask our uh, uh, my colleagues online, Senator Lakson and Senator Aimi, if you have opening statement, uh, sir, ma'am. Unmute. No, no opening statement, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. Um, Thank you, sir. How about uh, Ma'am Aimi? Yes, good morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. No real opening statement. Just a plea that our uh, presenters please uh, address the uh, burning issues of the day, uh, cut to the quick and address the modernization program, certain COA findings, and uh, the unpaid pensions. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, you want them to respond right away or uh, after the presentation na lang, ma'am? No, during the presentation, yun na yung uh, tumbukin nila kasi alam naman okay. natin na uh, marami pong uh, hearing. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, for orderly conduct of this hearing, we will first listen to the presentation of each agency. Uh, first is the presentation of the Department of Justice. At Department of National Defense, correction, Department of National Defense, followed by the individual presentations of any, if any, of the following. Number one, Armed Forces of the Philippines. Number two, General Headquarters. Number three, Office of the Secretary of National Defense. Number four, Government Arsenal. Number five, National Defense College of the Philippines. Number six, Office of Civil Defense. Number seven, Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, or PIVAW. And number eight, Veterans Memorial Medical Center. So I will now give the floor to Secretary uh, Delphine Lorenzana, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Mr. Chairman and members of the uh, Senate uh, Appropriations Committee, magandang kamaga po sa inyo lahat. Um, we are very um, honored to uh, be presenting before you today our budget proposal for 2022. Mr. Chairman, uh, with your permission, can I skip the amenities, the uh, missions, uh, organizations, and everything, and we we'll go directly to the uh, budget proposal? Anyway, uh, during the Q&A, we, we will be able to cover everything. Uh, depending on my question, uh, uh, yeah. yes, sir. Okay. Why, sir? Okay. Uh, can kindly go to uh, slide number 20, please? Uh, the in the budget proposal for uh, fiscal year 2022 to provide the resources to accomplish the goals and missions of the department, allow me to present the DND's budget proposal for fiscal year 2022. Next slide. 
Next slide. Based on the National Expenditure Program, the Defense Department is allocated a total budget of 297.1 billion pesos, of which 221.6 billion is for the regular fund. Yung iba po ay pang ano na yung pang uh, bayad ng pensions. The regular, next slide. The regular fund is distributed as follows. 128.7 billion or 44% for personal services, yung mga sweldo ito. 53.8 billion or 18% for maintenance and other operating expenses, MOOE. And 39.1 billion or 13% for capital outlay. The allocation for veterans and AP pensioners, which is under the pension and gratuity fund, is 75.5 billion pesos or 25% of the total budget proposal. Next slide. Compared to the DND budget for this year, our fiscal year 2022 budget proposal is higher by 8% or 16.1 billion pesos. The variances of its expense class is as shown in the graph in the uh, slide. Personal services with additional 6.2 billion pesos, MOOE with an increase of 3.4 billion, and capital outlay with an increase of 6.5 billion pesos. Next slide. The distribution of the regular allocation based on the prescribed budget structure and how it compares to the fiscal year 2022 budget is as shown as follows. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Operations increase by, uh, by 8%. While General Administration and Support, or GAS, increased by 4%. For pensions, which is included under the, the, under the pension fund, pension gratuity fund of the expenditure program, the total requirement for AFP retirees increased by 2%, equivalent to eight, 982 million pesos to cover the pension requirements of 147 1,041 military pensioners. On the other hand, the allocation for veterans has an increase of 1.2 billion pesos for the implementation of RA or Republic Act 1164 or the increase in all age pension of World War II, which are called World War II, Korean and Vietnam War pensioners from 5,000 to 20,000. Next slide. This slide shows how the DND budget proposal is distributed to DND line agencies under the regular fund. The share of the armed forces of the Philippines is 215.5 billion pesos, posting an 8.08% increase from the budget of 2021. Meanwhile, the allocation for civilian agencies totals 6.08 billion pesos, which is 0.42% higher than the 2021 appropriations. <clears throat> I shall now present the significant features of our budget proposal for 2022. The personal services allocation. The personal services allocation shall support a staffing summary of our line agencies composed of 152,518 uniformed military personnel 12,887 civilian employees and 69,938 CAFGO elements. The significant increase in personal services of 6.2 billion pesos can be attributed to the following requirements of filling up of positions, adjustment in pay and allowances due to actual data, terminal leave and retirement gratuity benefits, anniversaries and loyalty pays, and other personal services adjustments. On the other hand, the net increase in maintenance and other operating expenses, or MOOE, is 3.4 billion pesos. The MOOE variance results from total increases of 6.1 billion less the one-time projects implemented in 2021, amounting to 2.6 billion. The proposed MOE increases in 2022 
are intended for the following projects and activities. 1.7 billion for the expansion for existing programs, activities, and projects. 1.7 billion for sustainment of units. 1.3 billion for the OOE requirements of equipment acquired as part of the Capability Upgrade Program, COP, and Capital Outlay Projects. 720 million for additional fund for ammunitions. 15 million for ICT, MOOE requirements of METHI, and lastly, 657 million for COVID-19 related programs, projects. On capital outlay, there is a net increase of 6.4 billion pesos. This was a result of increases of 11.1 <clears throat> billion and the 2021 implemented programs and projects amounting to 4.7 billion that were factored out. The 2022 budget proposal includes capital outlay for the new or expanded projects of the department as follows. 8 billion for the restoration of this continued AFP modernization program. Ito po yung na-realign last year when nasagsagan po ng ng COVID. 947 million for the expansion of existing programs, activities, and projects. 769 million for the sustainment of units. 541 million for the mobility requirements. 381 million to support the construction and enhancement of base and base support at facilities. Yun po itong mga um, shipyards or uh, uh, ports para sa mga barko natin darating because we will have uh, big ships coming in and we need uh, facilities to, uh, to support them. 378 million for new programs, activities, and pro projects and 118 million for the hardware requirements for METI projects. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I have just presented the 297.1 billion peso budget proposal for the Defense Department for fiscal year 2022 and its significant features. It's assured that all of us in the department shall continue to pursue our mandate and achieve our goals with more vigor to ensure a stable national security environment conducive to economic growth and development. Notwithstanding the inclusion of priority programs, activities, and projects, or PAPS, and the 2022 National Expenditure Program, may I respectfully request favorable consideration of the following priority projects or activities of the department as congressional initiative from among those which were not considered in the National Expenditure Program. They are, they are uh, shown in the, uh, in the slide, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. That is the additional request for PAF, Philippine uh, Army and Philippine Navy. Slide 36, next slide, is the uh, Additional request uh, for PMC, Philippine Marine Corps, Marine Corps, GHQ, PMA, and the AFP Medical Center. Additional request for DND proper, uh, especially for the government arsenal and OCD. And additional request for NDCP, PBAO, and BMMC. For the AFP pension fund, it should be further noted that a total of 28.8 billion is required to support the requirements for arrearages, arrearages of military retirees and their beneficiaries. Ito po, Mr. Chairman, yung mga uh, hindi naibayad kaagad. If you remember the uh, increase of the salaries of the active personnel, PNP and AFP, was approved in 20, uh, early 20, uh, no, late 20, 20, 2018, or, uh, yeah, early 2018, but the uh, effectivity of the uh, payment of the pension was uh, happened uh, many months later. So meron, meron gap, meron tayong um, backlog or ba back pay. Ay ito po yung uh, 28.8 billion pesos na hinihingi ng mga veterano. Regarding the DND initiated program, special provisions to the proposed 
in the general appropriations for fiscal year 2022, the uh, special provisions. Modernization. On AFP modernization, it then is requesting the classification of the AFP modernization program and its program allocation as a special purpose fund to make it distinct and a separate budget item from the regular appropriations of the DMD pursuant of Section 4 of RA 10349. <clears throat> On the OCD Quick Response Fund, on OCD's Quick Response Fund, the DND recommends the adoption of the current GAA, or special provision on the QRF, with all the existing specifications on prepositioning of goods, equipment, emergency response units, activation of incident command system, and other allied support items. Further, we are proposing that the QRF be also used for the provision of financial assistance for the dead and injured victims of disasters due to natural and human-induced hazards, conduct of rapid and post-disaster needs assessment, RDNA or PDNA, and such other expenditures necessary to reduce or mitigate the consequences of disasters. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, as the uh, term states, quick response want is uh, kailangan mo na magkaroon ng disaster bago makareact yung uh, OCD to use this fund, ano? But uh, experience says that kung magkaroon tayo ng proactive, gagamitin natin yun to spend for some things para pag dumating yung, uh, yung calamity, ay mabawasan natin yung sila. Kasi yung example is the uh, mga dikes, mga canals. Uh, you have to wait for the typhoon to hit us pag pa-flooding muna bago tayo makagamit ng quick response fund. Whereas kung gawin na natin yung mga dikes na yan, kung gastosin natin kaagad, then uh, mas uh, kukunti siguro ang, uh, ang, ang damage. On the revolving fund for military shrines and installation under PIVAO, the additional provision on the use of PIVAO income is proposed as follows. Income derived from sale of non-serviceable or obsolete or unnecessary equipment, rentals from non-shrine facilities, and interest income from deposits of funds, net of operational cost, and bank financial charges shall be used to cover the MOOE and capital outlay requirements of PIVAO for the delivery of veterans' benefits subject to the approval of the Secretary of National Defense and disbursements of which shall be made in accordance with guidelines issued by DND and budgeting, accounting, and auditing rules, auditing rules and regulations. Ito po yung special na request ng uh, administrator ng PIVAO, si uh, Joseph Carolina. Dahil uh, PIVAO is now busy uh, improving our shrines para may, you can ramp up the love of nation to the kids. Para pong mga shrines na ito, pag napaganda natin, we can bring the kids there, stud students, young students, and show them the beautiful shrines that uh, depict the uh, heroism of our veterans. PIVAO tied allocation under PGP, PGM. Under the Pension and Gratuity Fund, the ND is also requesting for PIVAO that the Pension and Gratuity Fund shall also provide for the TAD or uh, uh, just the TAD, right? Joe? Total Administrative Disability. The TAD is Total Administrative Disability Arrears for Surviving Years of this veterans. Ito pong TAD na to ay yung uh, pag dumating ng, uh, ng 70 years yung pensioner ay matatagan ng uh, 1,750 yung kanilang old age pension. Further, for the AFP, the ND is also proposing the retention or adoption of the same special provisions under the current GAA pertaining to the income from golf course operations. Ito po yung matagal na pinag ng mga mga DHQ on the AFP kasi marami silang, meron silang mga golf courses which can also provide some income for the improvement of uh, the camps or for the, uh, for the, for the uh, moral, and, moral and welfare of the, of the personnel. New provision for hospital income. A new special provision is further proposed for the AFP pertaining to the use of AFP hospital incomes and other revenues from AFP morale, welfare, and recreation facilities, 
and other business-like instrumentalities. Yung pong income ng ating mga hospital because uh, they all street uh, civilians, uh, nakakulikta naman sila ng uh, Philippine Health, PhilHealth. Uh, ang Even though the AFP hospitals and the veterans hospitals were specifically created to, to cater to the veterans and the armed forces, ay hindi po sila makatanggi pag kami dumating ng mga pasyente, especially the emergency ones. So, kailangan nilang uh, i-admit yun. But they also get some uh, funds. Ito yung pinasabi nilang um, income revenues from, uh, from hospitals. New provisions for combat expense tax exemption. On the combat expense under AFP, the additional provision will help the tactical units of the AFP cooperate in remote barangays classified as fifth and sixth class municipalities where business and commerce are scarce, are scarce with few stores to choose from that do not issue official receipts, withholding taxes on financial transactions. In these small salary stores could be misinterpreted as abuse by soldiers and used as propaganda by state groups, which is detrimental to the combat operations and campaign to clear these remote barangays from threat groups affectation. Ito po yung experience natin mga army sa mga biblib na lugar na wala namang mga itong mga o kunti lang yung tindahan o meron naman, hindi naman sa nag-issue ng mga uh, receipts. Uh, that ends my briefing, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, we are now ready for questioning. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Secretary Marisana, sir. Sir, uh, before I uh, turn the microphone to my colleagues, may isa lang akong tanong uh, for the better appreciation of this committee. Pwede bang paki, what is the difference between veterans at saka a retirees? Oh. When you say veterans, sinong, sinong nakukover ito? Kasi oh. alam ko, yung ibang AAP retirees, veterans din. So, paklaro ko, sir, kung ano yung diferensya ng dalawa. Uh, wala pong pagbabago, wala pong pagkakaiba yan, uh, Mr. Chairman, kasi lahat naman ng retirees are uh, considered as uh, veterans. Ngayon, nagkataiba lang po ito ngayon sa pag-treat ng mga pension nila dahil yung uh, PIVAO, Philippine Veterans uh, Administration Office, ay mag-start magbayad sa veterans old age pension at the age of 65. So from the time the uh, soldier or officer retires at the age of 56 hanggang 64, wala silang uh, matatanggap sa PIVAO. After that, papasok na sila sa PIMO. So, nagkaroon ngayon ng uh, separate pension uh, fund, yung old age, old age pension na 5,000 plus yung TED na 1,750 when they reach the age of uh, 70. As, 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 now, uh, meron po tayong, ano, meron tayong proposal na pag-isahin na lang yung pagbabayad ng pension at saka yung other veterans benefits under the PIMO but uh, we are still uh, having some uh, studies on how to uh, unify these things. Pero wala pong pagbabago, Mr. Chairman, yung veterans at saka yung uh, retirees. So sa ngayon, sir, uh, present setup natin, pag ikaw ay retiree, uh, um, sa ngayon, 59, mag-retire, uh, 56, mag-retire tayo. Okay. From 56, uh, 56 onwards hanggang 65, you are getting your uh, uh, Pension. pension from the AFP. Yes. Then pagka 65 mo, doon ka na magkukuha ng pension mo sa PIBAW. Ah, hindi, hindi pa rin, Mr. Chairman. Ano ba? Hindi, will, hindi yung pension will continue to be paid by the uh, PGMC. Uh, yung ating mga... Uh, uh, pension, uh, pension Gratuity and Management uh, Center. Continue yan hanggang... Uh, walang katapusan yun hanggang matay yung pensioner. Now, yung... PIBA will only start their uh, portion of the all this pension pagdating na 65. So, the PGMC will continue paying uh, the pensioner. Pagka namatay siya, it may be transferred to the to the uh, wife at tuloy-tuloy pa rin yun ang kaya mamatay. So, so meaning, pagdating mo ng uh, age 65, dubli na yung matatanggap mo. Meron ka ba sa gratuity? Iba pa yung sa PIBA? 
Oh yes, masih sama. Pero malit lang po yung sa pibaw, malit lang 5,000 lang naman yun eh. Old age pension. Pang ano yan, pang pang dagdag sa mga uh, pang Oh, kasi kasi uh, ang una ko kasi appreciation is uh, pag sinabi mong pibaw, veterans, it only caters to yung mga World War II veterans, yung mga yeah, yes. guerrillas. Kaya inisip ko kung yung pibaw, pagdating ng panahon na patay na lahat itong mga veterans na ito, eh mawawala na rin itong pibaw. Kasi ano pa ikikater nila? Wala namang World War II veterans. Pero sa, sa sinasabi mo ngayon na Considered veterans na rin pala itong mga retirees natin na after World War II, so nandiyan pa rin yung pibaw. Nandiyan pa rin na hindi mawawala yan, Mr. Chairman, kasi di veterans naman, hindi naman tayo mawawala ng veterano. Every year meron tayong veteranong pumapasok, uh, some soldiers from active service to become a veteran or retiree or veteran. So, uh, meron nga kami proposal uh, before, Mr. Chairman, to elevate the pibaw ito uh, for department. Dahil malaki na yung kanilang inasikasong mga veterano. Eh. Uh, I think they are now almost 200,000 veterans and increasing yung inasikaso nila. Plus, they also have, they also manage the uh, veterans hospital, yung mga shrines, and uh, uh, pibaw has field, field offices all over the country na nag-aalaga uh, ng mga veterano. Pero din silang mga MOA, um, Memorial of Agreement to with with, uh, with uh, government hospitals na maglagay sila ng uh, veterans ward para yung mga veterano na sa probinsya, hindi na papunta sa BMMC, doon na lang sila magpagamot. Yun ang uh, programa nila. It's a very good program, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, pwede ba ibalik yung uh, slide, yung pie chart? Yung second slide ata yun? May pie chart? Ng budget? Chart. Ng, uh, yeah, di hindi? Yeah? Pakibalik yung pie chart ng uh, DND budget. Para second slide ata. Yan, yan. Pakitulang dito. Yan, sir. Uh, pinakamalaki sa pie chart yung orange. Regular personnel services. 43%. Tapos meron ka ditong pension na 25%. So, gusto ko lang klaruin na dito sa personal services, regular personal services mo na 43%, kasama na dito yung uh, pension ng mga AFA retirees. Kasama dyan. Ah, hindi pa, Mr. Chairman, uh, yung pension na ano, nandiyan nakalamp, nakalamp na dyan sa 75.3 billion na 25% of the total uh, budget. It's so, uh, regular, parang soldo lang ito, soldo lang. So, so doon lang ng active, sir, active. Diba? Tsaka yung civilians natin na nagkatrabaho sa EFP. Ah, huh? uh, okay. So, itong 25% na pension, pension talaga yan ng EFP retirees at saka yung mga veterans. Yes. Um, Nandiyan lahat. Correct. Oh, that's it. Okay. okay. Thank you for the clarification, sir. Now, I yield the floor to Senator Lakson, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a couple of policy uh, questions or issues. Now, first question is, what is the percentage share of the country's military expenditures in terms of our gross domestic product? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think it's uh, below 1%. I think uh, last year it was 0.09%. Uh, so that is uh, it's my estimate. I don't know the exact figure actually. So, yeah, thereabouts, more or less 1% of the GDP. Yes, sir. You know? Now, what's the ideal uh, share uh, of the military expenditures? Sir, uh, excuse me, Secretary Lorenzal, sir, before you answer, uh, excuse me, uh, Senator Lacton, sir, I just would like to recognize the physical presence of Senator Tolentino and dito ngayon sa katabi ko at saka si Senator uh, Nancy Binay who is online. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, go ahead, sir, uh, Secretary Lorenzal, sir. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, yeah, uh, the question uh, is... Natin dito yung 
Uh, Del, uh, yung standard that, that we should follow, yung minimum credible defense posture, hindi ba? Yes, sir. So what is the ideal? Uh, based on the uh, expenditure of our neighboring countries who have already developed their uh, own credible uh, defense posture, uh, I think 2% uh western german will be ideal for us so that we can procure more uh, equipment and ang ang tingin po namin mr chairman ay kung if we spend for uh, new equipment ay we can reduce also our people uh, for instance kung marami pa yung helicopter na magdadala ng ating mga tropa sa mga remote areas we need more we need less people kasi ang ginagawa ng army ngayon Lakad ng lakad, lakad ng lakad. So, they need more people to do that. Well, as kung marami tayo, marami tayo yung equipment, we can reduce the, peep, the personnel. And in the long run, we can also uh, uh, save. So, 2% Mr. Chairman ng ating, sa akin, uh, for us, is ideal. A share of the uh, AFP or the DND uh, in the national uh, GDP. That, that is correct, no? That's exactly my point, no? Don't you think it's about time that we shift from personnel or infantry-based uh, AFP uh, strength to uh, equipment or equipage? Kasi napag-iwanan na tayo. That's, you know, 1% difference is, is huge, huh? uh, Kasi we're at 1% and the ideal is 2%. So in nominal... Uh, value, magkano kailangan natin to have a minimum credible defense posture? More or less? Uh, if our budget now, Mr. Chairman, is 297,000 billion, maybe we are looking at about uh, more the, um, between 500 billion to uh, billion. 600 billion. That would be ideal, and we can actually now uh, focus on our capability and, and development. Yes, but the problem, if we, even if we double up the budget of the Defense Department, ama dadagdagan na magdodoble rito yung PS because nakapokus tayo sa personnel. But if we shift uh, to the uh, equipage, maybe we will have a different figure. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, that's exactly the correct. Uh, while we, if we improve our equipage, uh, that can multiply the effectiveness of our people. We can actually reduce the uh, our personnel. In other countries, Mr. Chairman, the ideal ratio of the expenditure per PS and the to, to the total budget of the military is about thirty percent. 30 or less. Sa Amerika na 25% lang sa budget nila yung pangbapang sweldo. All others is for the maintenance of the equipment. So, ngayon ang ating uh, ratio is 44% of the budget is uh, 43% is dedicated for personal services na pakalaki yan. Halos kalahati ng budget natin ay pang sweldo. If you can reduce that to about maybe 20%, 25%, then we have more money for to maintain our equipment and buy more equipment, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it's actually 42.3. Yeah, thereabouts, you know. Uh, anyway, yes, sir. Um, yesterday, during our final hearing on the MUP pension reform bills, uh, Yusek Ding Luna emphasized that the strength of the, of the AFP is threat based, not population based. No? Uh, now, what are the identified threats in the order of severity and, uh, of course, priority? Mr. Chairman, it's still the uh, communist insurgency. There are still pockets of uh, resistance and uh, strongholds in the Philippines, like Eastern Mindanao, Negros, uh, Samar, and to some extent, Cagayan Valley. <clears throat> Uh, it's true. I, I, that's, that's what actually we were discussing uh, for many times, Mr. Chairman. Na threat based kami compared sa PNP na merong ratio ng one policeman per so many population. Itong um, armed forces, pagkas mahimik yung isang lugar, 
then we withdraw our port of forces. Now, the reason why we added more, uh, recruited more uh, people in the past uh, several uh, years is because of the uh, terrorism that are already in uh, Adhassa, Mindanao. Uh, that's why we we uh, 7,000 troops in Hulo just to add to to, 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 uh, to address the Abu Sayyaf. So, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we 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 believe that uh, we should look at the AFP differently from the other uniform personnel. Thank you. And of course, when we talk of a, a terrorist threat, that would also involve threat from the CPG, the communist terrorist groups, uh, because uh, of the recent designation by the uh, APC, the CPP NPA, as a terrorist, terrorist group, right? So, kasama na sa terrorist threat yung yung communist uh, insurgency. Is that correct? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But uh, the, the terrorism is very different from the extremist uh, groups. Right? They, they are lumped as uh, one group of terrorists, as terrorists, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I, uh, I agree. <clears throat> I asked a question because uh, parang hindi nag up yung, yung personal strength. You know? Because it seems that uh, Compared to 2021, the the current year, nag increase pa yung budget sa PNPS ng AFP from 122.8 billion. Now it's at 129 billion pesos. So I thought we're gaining ground against the uh, communist insurgency. So why are we increasing the uh, the budget of the, uh, of the of personal services? Diba, dapat threat-based. If we're gaining ground, dapat pababa yung population uh -huh. ng uh, or per personal fill-up ng AFP. Is that uh, the correct or logical uh, uh, conclusion? Uh, you are correct, Mr. Chairman, that uh, dapat nag-dutor down na rin tayo dahil we keep saying that uh, the communist insurgency is uh, losing ground and they're losing people. But uh, the the reason why we have the increase of uh, personal services is so we 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 organize one division in Holo that will be there uh, permanently uh, to uh, to maintain peace and order there. That's one division of uh, how many people? Uh, about. 5,000 uh, personnel, three brigades, and one headquarters uh, uh, unit. Uh, plus, um, the president has uh, doubled the uh, combat pay of uh, soldiers in uh, in Hulu. Uh, that is the reason of the increase, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, that's the 11th division, no? addressing the uh, situation in the Basulta area. That's right, Mr. Chairman. Meron lang akong question. I want to be clarified though. Yung distribution ng uh, ng uh, budget for personal services sa AFP. Of course, yung AFP uh, is getting 98% of the entire PS budget of the Defense Department. Ano? Kasi 129, ang nakadedicate sa AFP is 126.83 billion. And rightly so, kasi nandyan naman talaga yung personal ng, ng uh, Defense Department. Now, my question is, uh, if we calculate, ano, yung 126 uh, billion, ang 42.398 billion dito for PS, no, ang Philippine Army would be, get, would be getting 20.179 billion. Philippine Navy, 15.58 billion. Or just a difference of less than 5 billion uh, pesos, you know, 20 and 15. Air Force, of course, a small unit kasi mostly equipment ito, 6.639 billion. Now, comparing the same with the total AFP strength you know, of 152,158 personnel, yung Philippine Army, they, they, they have 68.9% or 104,955 personnel of the entire AFP strength, no? 
yung Philippine uh, Air Force, 12.5%. Yung Philippine Navy, 16.6% 16 at 25,260. Now, parang hindi nag a ito because yung share sa budget ng uh, personal uh, service ng Philippine Army is 20.179 billion or equivalent to 47.8 actually 47.9% ano yung Philippine Navy 36.7% com uh, nung budget compared to just 16.6% of the personal strength Air Force okay lang ano nagtatama siya but be between the Philippine Air Army and the Philippine Navy but hindi nagtatama yung personal strength do sa budget sa personal services. Kindly review this. Baka typo ito or... Because there's a very big discrepancy. 16.6% ah. yeah. ng personal strength ng Philippine Navy ng entire AFP. And yet, their share of the personal services, yung budget, nasa 36%. 36.7% yeah. at 15.58 billion. Kindly recompute. Kasi mukhang mali. Yes, Mr. Chairman. We have Siguro mas malaki sweldo ng Navy kaysa sa Army. <laughs> yes, Mr. Chairman. We will submit the report. Uh, we will look into it again and find out uh, how these figures came out. And we'll submit, sir. Yeah, please. Now, another question. Uh, this is regarding... You have a proposal to transfer from the regular budget yung sa revised modernization program na sa regular budget you're proposing to transfer it to the special purpose fund is that correct just a briefing in your that's report. correct mr chairman that's correct why para po hindi na sa regular ha bakit kaya uh, oh, excuse me uh, pa pa repeat mr chairman Ano ah, okay. Uh, you have to... Yung, yung inyong uh, budget sa... Magkano to? 35. 35 billion, ano? You're proposing... I saw in your briefing, you're proposing that it be transferred from your regular budget to SPF, to the to Special Purpose Fund. So why is that? Nandun na sa regular budget, kayo na may control, ililipat yung Special Purpose Fund, and yung special purpose fund is used to augment the regular budget and it is only released upon the approval of the president. Bakit inaalis uh, pa sa regular budget? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the reason why we want that to be separated is so that uh, yung, yung regular budget kasi ay naglalaps, merong buhay yung budget na yan eh. Well, no, it is one year. And um, the procurement of capital assets for the AFP is uh, a multi-year uh, contract. So, kailangan natin na matagal na ano. And sometimes, the uh, procedure of procuring this equipment takes time. So, kung mag mayroon tayong budget ngayon, uh, sa budget nitong darating ng taon, we start also the procurement. Sometimes, it will take more than a year to, uh, to uh, perfect the contract. So, mayroon tayong naman perfect yung contract. Kasama siya sa GAA, ga ga tapos na yung buhay ng uh, pera. So we'll have to request again. But if it is uh, put into the special fund, uh, medyo matagal-tagal bago na mamawala yung, ano na yan, yung, yung, uh, yung budget na yan. And we can plan better uh, the expenditure. It's either that or you are not ready yet to uh, present the itemized list of your uh, equipment to be procured, di ba? Kasi pag ginawa mong SPF, magiging lamsam yan. E meron na kayong uh, Horizon 1, Horizon 2, Horizon 3, and you're supposed to have uh, identified already the equipment that you will procure uh, during different periods or in different years. Ano? So why would you transfer it and, and, and uh, transform it into... Uh, a lump sum appropriation under the special purpose fund instead of an itemized uh, budget under the reg regular budget. Are you not ready uh, to identify the equipment? 
that you are uh, going to purchase or procure? We already have the uh, we have already identified, Mr. Chairman. In fact, uh, until Horizon Three, but the process is that uh, we cannot start the uh, procurement process hanggat po lang pera. Na dapat nandyan yung pera sa DBM, we can uh, uh, confirm that there is money there for this uh, specific project bago pa mag-start yung mga bidding processes and the procedure. So, yun ang titinda namin. That's the, the argument. That's the main argument that we have to separate it from GAA and make it a special uh, fund. Well, with all due respect, I would uh, disagree, no? Kasi pag uh, under the net nga, nasa regular budget na, it means merong uh, ready budget dyan. And uh, you should leave it to the Congress kasi supposedly we have the power of the purse to appropriate. And if we appropriate, and since the GAA is, a, uh, is the law of the land, then DBM should provide the funds to, uh, to procure those items that uh, have already been identified by the Defense Department. So, yun lang ang point ko. Bakit gagawin natin lump sum? Yung otherwise, itemized na under the revised uh, AFP modernization program. Uh, baka magkaroon ng problema. At saka, di ba pagka-obligated na, uh, identified yun na. So, pa-procure, i-build out nyo. Anyway, G2G naman yan under the under the uh, revised uh, AP modernization program may mga parameters naman sinusunod so why would you transfer it to the special purpose fund i will uh, look at the game mr chairman yeah i will yeah we will look uh, Yes, sir. We will look into it again and uh, yeah. consider your uh, comments on this uh, matter. With, with the permission of uh, Senator Lakson, sir, uh, yes. just would yeah. like to manifest that uh, yung punto na nil-raise ni Senator Lakson, sir, is trying to help you make your life easier. Yes, so, uh, correct. Pero may, hindi kayo mahirap sa trabaho ninyo. Eh, eh nandiyan na nga. Nasa regular budget na nyo. Ilipat pa nyo sa special uh, uh, fund na with approval of the president. So, kung sabihin ng uh, DBM na, sir, huwag nung i-release sa AP and uh, may iba pa tayong pagagamitan. So, kayo magiging kawawa. Di ba? Kung nakalagay nyo sa GAA, regular fund, uh, mas maganda. Anyway, kung in, ang question mo dyan is yung lifespan ng budget na one year lang, I'm not recommending uh, you to 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 uh, to get the services of PSDBM. Kasi <laughs> yan na yan ang ginagawa. <laughs> yan ang ginagawa ng uh, karamihan. Eh. Uh, pag uh, maubos yung lifespan ng budget, punta ka sa PSDBM. PSDBM naman, tong-tua naman, na nandun sa kanila. Dahil uh, magtagal na magtagal doon, uh, alam mo na, eh, uh, yun lang, yun lang sa akin, sir. Uh, si Senator Luxon is uh, trying to make your life easier with regards to your budget para uh, hindi kayo mahirap. Yeah. yeah, that is correct. Instead of making their life miserable, we like to <laughs> like to make their life easier. Anyway. Yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so off budget accounts, you know, there's 1.451 billion. This is not funded under the expenditure program, of course, because off budget. Ito yung revenue generating uh, income ng AFP. Are there specific earmarks? If so, kindly give us the details. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we will give the details. When? <laughs> During plenary? Uh, we can give it uh, within this... Uh, no? Before the plenary, Mr. Chairman, we can uh, give the right. details. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. There's an item ano, sa under MOE, support to NTF LCAP, 36,807,000. Medyo maliit pero meron na separate budget yung NTF LCAP. Bakit meron pang support to NTF LCAP? What is this? Administrative? Uh, this is the uh, funds that will be used by the AFP, sir, to support LCAP in the field. 
wala naman silang tatanggap doon sa LCAT kasi yung LCAT they have to do own projects. So, nagdag lang ito, pang dagdag ito sa mga gagamitin ng mga units to support the LCAT projects. Yes, pero may admin na uh, uh, support fund na rin yung NTF LCAT eh. Out of the 28 yeah. billion, di ba, a, a portion of that is for administrative cost. So, why would DND still support uh, uh, the funding of NTF LCAT? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, the 28 billion that um, the LCAT has, uh, is uh, requesting is for the development of the uh, cleared barangays. I believe there is nothing there to be used for administration of uh, LCAT. Pagkakandit uh, Mr. Chairman, is that kanya-kanyang gastos ng pera to support ng LCAT. So, All the line agencies, AFP, the ILG, meron silang de-allocate from their own fund for the uh, sustainment of the LCAC uh, programs in the field. So, yun, the OE, the PWH, and everything, hindi naman sila uh, kumukuha sa National LCAC ng NTF LCAC ng pera. In fact, uh, the executive director of uh, NTF LCAC, si uh, Secretary Spiron, I think he is using the NSA uh, pro, uh, funds, part of that, to uh, manage the, uh, the task force. Yes, okay. Sa AP modernization, ano? Mr. Right Chairman? How? Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead, uh, sir, with the permission of Senator yeah. Lakson, sir. Uh, the permission of Senator uh, Lakson, uh, connected din po din sa NDFLK. Sige. Uh, go ahead. Senator Nancy. Yeah, Sec Secretary Lauren Sana, for this year, ba ho, meron kayong budget dito sa support to NTF LCA? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, for uh, 2021. What's year? Mr. Chairman, for this year, 2021, the budget for to support the NTFL cut is 120 million pesos. For this year, huh? 120 million? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. And saan niyo ho ginamit, saan niyo ho ginagamit ngayon itong 120 million? I Maybe mean, you can cite certain uh, pro projects or anong klaseng support ho yung ginagawa niyo? Mr. Chairman, uh, this money is a, pro is a portion to all the units. Uh, lahat kasi ng ating mga divisions, army divisions, including the uh, Navy and the Air Force are also involved in the LCAP. And they are given money to uh, for administrative services. Itong uh, pera na ito. Uh, if you will uh, apportion this to all the units of the armed forces, especially the army, they have uh, 11 divisions. Uh, there are uh, for the AFP, there are six uh, area commands, all uh, having to do with uh, um, pursuing the the activities of the LCAP. Um, ko kunti lang po itong 120 million uh, pesos. Secretary Lorenzana, baka ho para mas malinaw, ano ho ba yung administrative services? Uh, I cannot uh, talk about uh, details, uh, Mr. Chairman. If we allow us, uh, we will uh, immediately will give us a report of how this money is being spent by uh, the IEP. Okay. Uh, is, is it okay with you, Senator Nancy? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Secretary Lorenzana. Thank you, Senator Pinglak. Okay. So let's give back the floor to Senator Lakson, sir. Yes. Secretary Del, don't punish yourself too hard. Huh? Nandiyan ka naman si Boy Postino, siya pasagutin mo. <laughs> okay, yung sa revised sa AFP modernization, uh, how, how delayed uh, are we in the implementation of the AFP modernization program? Ayan, tinuro na si Boy. Sige. <laughs> We will allow the chief of staff to answer, uh, Mr. Chairman.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. You have the, you have the floor, uh, Mr. Postino. Yes, sir. Allow me to. Yes, sir. Uh, right now, sir, uh, for Horizon 1, uh, there were 32 projects completed. Meanwhile, uh, 26 sublots of various projects and seven projects were already delivered. Uh, the reverse natin, ano? Uh, yes. Jal Postino. Ang yes, sir. Ang mga interesado tayo, ilang projects ang uh, hindi pa completed sa Horizon 1 to date? Remember yes, sir. For... Should have been completed uh, way back in 2017. Ah? That's the, the, yes, sir. Two... Yes, sir. 2017, sir. Uh, yes. For there, were, there are a total of 53 projects uh, for Horizon 1 from 2013 to 2017. We have already... 32 uh, completed projects, and uh, we have uh, 21, 21 remaining projects, sir. Uh, but uh, these uh, 21 remaining projects are all in different phases of uh, procurement already, sir. Yeah, pero masyadong delayed na. Ang record namin, 18 projects under Horizon 1 are yet to be completed. So you, what you're saying is, more than uh, more than eighteen, pa twenty plus, 20 twenty one, sir. Uh, uh, there, there. As this is as of thirty one July, sir, twenty twenty one. There are still uh, twenty one uh, remaining projects. Uh, some, sir. Uh, let us. Uh, some of the the projects, uh, kasi sir, I uh, we have to. There are some projects that we cannot get just get off the shelf. Uh, some projects are, for example, uh, for the Navy and the Air Force, uh, some projects will have to be, uh, after the, the, the procurement process, it will take some time bago magawa yung mga barko, for example, sir, yung mga aeroplano. Okay, so when will Horizon 1 be fully implemented? Kailan makompleto ito? Yes, sir, uh, Yes, sir. For the for the twenty one for the twenty one project, sir. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, the CBRN or the uh, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear equipment. Uh, this is uh, for the fourth quarter of twenty twenty one, and so with the other, sir. We have a timeline, uh, uh, different timelines, and uh, most will be. Uh, Delivered uh, within 2020, the end of 2021 and 2022, sir. Okay, that's Horizon 1. Eh? Uh, now, Horizon 2. Ano yung new projected date ng completion for Horizon 2? Yes, sir, uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair. For Horizon 2, we have uh, a total of uh, 100 nine projects as of 31 july 2021 uh, we have nine completed projects we still have yes sir and we still have 100 remaining projects uh, also the different uh, stages of procurement already sir yeah this is significant huh? uh, because the yung three horizons it is part of the strategy under the capability development program no, Horizon 1, ito yung, uh, this represents the initial defense posture. Horizon 2, uh, we intend to achieve a minimum credible defense posture. Ito yung pig-uusapan natin kanina. Horizon yes, 2, sir. this is the ultimate goal. Ano? Credible defense posture. Now, nasa na tayo sa ating capability development program? Where are we? Yes, sir. Uh, for Horizon 1, sir, uh, these are uh, projects intended to uplift, uplift our capabilities, our capability in performing internal security operations and territorial defense. Now, for, for, for Horizon 2, sir, these projects are, are uh, 
to uplift our capability, capability in performing our internal security operations. And this is a transition, sir, from internal security to, to territorial defense. So, kung mapapansin, sir, natin, particularly doon sa yung the first, sir, na ano, yung first na na modernization program, yung 7898, uh, this is more on ISO ISO projects, uh, projects that will address the ISO. Dito po, sir, sa ating bago modernization program, uh, including sa Horizon 1 and Horizon 2, this is slowly transitioning from ISO to territorial defense, sir. Yes, so, ano, possibly pa ba na makakamplish natin yung minimum credible defense posture by uh, end 2022? Yan ang schedule ng Horizon 2, eh. Yes, sir. Uh, based doon, sir, sa, doon sa, sa lineup ng ating mga modernization projects, uh, we could achieve credible defense. But at the rate, sir, na yung, yung funds available for these projects, medyo doon, sir, nagkaka... Yes, sir. Uh, doon, sir, nagkakaroon ng uh, delay because of the availability of funds. Your Honor, sir. Ilan nilang kakras yung C-130 Hercules? Yung plan, di ba? July, uh, latest yata is July this year, no? We took the lives of 50 people. Tapos, before that, yung newly acquired Black Hawk helicopter nagkras din during a night training uh, flight, killing six people. Yes, sir. Yes, your honor. Uh, th that happened. Uh, the Black Hawk sir happened on 23 uh, June 2021 in uh, Camp in Barangay Odonel Capastar. Lock, your honor. Mr. Chair. I suppose you have already completed your uh, investigation. I know, I yes, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chair. The 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 investigation was. Uh, was already completed and uh, it was already already submitted to to uh, the secret the, the Department of National Defense, Your Honor. Ano yan? Technical or may, pilot may, error? May I give, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I give a summary of uh, the findings of the Air Force? Yes. Uh, the finding of the Air Force, Mr. Chairman, is that it's a uh, confluence of uh, events, uh, radio air, uh, both of them, uh, the, especially the Black Hawks, uh, there was this uh, bad weather na pinasok nila yung ulap and medyo nagkabertigo sila. And that's why uh, they didn't know where, how high they were. So inararo na yung tagilidan ng uh, bundok. Uh, uh, it's actually a mixture of uh, pilot's error and uh, weather disturbances, Mr. Chairman. Now for the C-130, uh, mayroon ding... Um, Epekto yung weather dahil may tailwind. Tailwind sa the uh, aircraft uh, approach the uh, runway too fast and they tried to uh, lift the, the, uh, the aircraft again to go around but it has uh, no more power to uh, get uh, to, 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 to fly high so sumabit siya doon sa mga sa mga kahoy doon sa may duro ng uh, hulo runway. So ito ay uh, not, not, not totally pilot's error but uh, also some uh, weather. And uh, the C-130 aircraft, Mr. Chairman, since it uh, was that was received from the U.S. last January, ay ang sad report sa baka meron din mga technical things din na nangyari dahil hindi pa nila alam. Dahil yung, ang, yung black box, the uh, flight data recorder uh, uh, is... Uh, so it was totally burned, hindi na makukuha kung anong nangyari doon. So yun ang naging uh, conclusion ng Philippine Air Force, uh, Mr. Chairman. And the MG, MG520 attack chopper, yung nag-crash din, yung namatay yung piloto, pilot's error din, and weather? I think it's the, the yung, yung MG520, Mr. Chairman, is uh, more on ano, eh, yung uh, mechanical failure material failure dahil uh, nahalatan nila na nag, uh, nawawalan na ng uh, altitude and the crew the crew uh, the pilot uh, ordered the crew to jump di ba 
Yeah, yeah, it's actually a metal fatigue and corrosion metal chairman and namatay yung piloto rito because he tried to land the uh, the uh, aircraft sa pinipilit niyang umabot sa lupa pero hindi na umabot na nahulog sa dagat Mr. Chairman. Lahat ba ito procured under the AFP modernization program? Ito mga nag-crash? Yung ano lang sir? Yung sir yung sir kayo lang sir? Ano yan? Is it part of the yes. 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 So this it was not this was not part of the modernization program, Mr. Chairman. So, ilan sa mga air disasters ang uh, part ng AP modernization program, yung procurement. Uh, I'm asking this question. Recently, Mr. Chairman, Chairman, I think the, recently yung uh, Black Hawks and uh, in the one o nine that uh, cross cross landed in uh, Kaguyan. But nobody appears there because they were already landing. Medyo may gust of winds na hindi niya na-control yung aeroplano. So, nag-roll over on its side yung helicopter. So, nasira yung helicopter. And, uh, yun, another uh, uh, equipment na destroyed because of uh, weather disturbance. You know, I'm asking these questions because we're still in the middle of uh, procuring, di ba? para makompleto yung uh, modernization. And uh, kung common denominator, alimbawa, technical uh, deficiency, baka there's a need to review yung uh, procurement under the modernization program. That's the only reason why I, uh, I'm asking these questions. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we will uh, direct the Navy and the Air Force to look into this closely. But uh, yung isang nag-cross kasi dito, uh, hindi naman ito yung modernization, yung C-130. This is a, a, a grant. So we also paid for the refurbishment of this aircraft before it was delivered to us. But uh, they are not uh, actually uh, part of our procurement of brand new uh, uh, aircraft. And... Uh, the House of Representatives has already allocated uh, money for three brand new uh, uh, C 130s, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I yield the floor, Mona, to the Chairman and, uh, my, and the other uh, colleagues present. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Laksun, sir. Uh, before I recognize Senator Ayi Marcos, I just would like to remind the people here, uh, the officers here from DMD and the AP that uh, the program is modernization. Modernization program. So, pag modernization program, ang bilhin natin, modern equipment. Hindi tayo bibilhin ng mga luma, mga adequated na mga C-130, mga helicopter na taga 25 years old na, tapos uh, babagsak na naman, kawawa mga piloto natin. Uh, modern, modern, kahit na ako, I go for quality, not for quantity. Kahit na matagal tayong makabili ng ganitong number of equipment, basta quality ang uh, primary consideration. At uh, may wasan talaga yung technical problem. Kung, kung meron mang babagsak na air asset natin, ang magiging rason dyan dapat is hindi technical kundi or mechanical kundi minus error or weather para mamainus na yung uh, technical or mechanical na uh, uh, reason sa pagbagsak ng isang uh, air asset. So yun lang sir, um, ako lang, uh, reminder lang. Reminder to my uh, <laughs> uh, secretary or sana. <laughs> I make statement. Isar, you uh, have the floor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman uh, that was actually the uh, direction of what we are doing at the DND. I have talked uh, about this with the President uh, extensively. Ang sabi ko sa kanya, Mr. President, pwede dapat na natin i-retire yung ating mga UWIs. Now, the Black Hawk is a very uh, good uh, 
aircraft. There are about uh, more than 3,000 of these uh, aircraft flying all over the world, made by Lockheed. Medyo na minalas lang yung isa dito. It's not uh, actually uh, failure ng mechanical, kundi uh, mostly as a pilot's er- error na to. So ang so proposal ko sa kanya last January, the President, is to uh, buy uh, 32 more uh, Black Hawks para mapalitan na natin yung ating uh, Hueys. Because the Hueys have been uh, have figured in several accidents also last year na namatayan tayo ng maraming tao. I think last year I, we had about, we had four, four accidents na involving the Hueys. Uh, then uh, the C-130s, um, we propose, I proposed also to the president to buy five C-130s uh, at 37 billion each. So, uh, and uh, sabi naman niya, uh, he approved it before, I think uh, at the start of the pandemic, uh, before the start of the pandemic, lima ang approved, pero it was moved, uh, na na-delay dahil doon nga sa, sa, sa COVID fund na kinuha pa nila ibang budget natin. So, yun din, Mr. Chairman, yung mga barko natin, gusto rin nating uh, palitan kasi I found out from the Navy that we still have five ships that were uh, given to us by the, uh, by the U.S. after World War I or World War II. So, tayo lang yan, yung bay ang bansa dito sa buong mundo, we still have five uh, uh, World War II vintage uh, ships in its inventory. So, ang sabi ko sa Navy, I-retire na rin natin yan, pero sabi nila, hintayin mo na natin yung bago bago ito ma-retire. Because uh, anyway, pwede pa naman daw yung uh, lima na yon. So that's uh, the, the direction actually, Mr. Chairman, to modernize. Tama kayo. Eh, kung gusto mo i-modernize, bumili ka ng modern equipment, hindi yung luma. Tama. Tama ka, sir. Uh, I agree with you. And uh, uh, yung pagsabi mo na hanggang ngayon, tayo na lang mayroong old war vintage sa mga barko, I, I I take it not as an insult, but as a compliment sa kagalingan ng ating Philippine Navy na mag-maintain ng ganyan na mga assets natin. Hanggang ngayon, buhay pa. Ibig sabihin, magaling talaga mag-maintain yung uh, ating Philippine Navy. So, congratulations sa Philippine Navy. Uh, I would like to give the floor to Senator Amy Marcos, ma'am. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Chairman De La Rosa. I'd just like to uh, take off from uh, what uh, Senator Ping Lacson already mentioned regarding the AFP modernization law. Uh, tulad ninyo, nalilito kung bakit uh, gustong lipatin from GHQ and uh, the basic uh, AFP budget, bakit gustong lipatin yung $35 billion ng AFP modernization program to a lump sum or a special purpose fund? Hindi ba doon sa orig sa original uh, AFP modernization law the uh, fund is a special fund and does not revert to the general fund even if it is not spent by year end nagbago na ba yung batas um, why are we uh, concerned about this when there's no reversion involved unless uh, the law has been amended it's one of the rare and privileged exceptions to the one fund policy of the DBM. Mr. Chairman, then the pagka intindi ko, in fact, when the modernization law was passed in 1995, specifically there is a provision there that the, the modernization fund is may trust fund yan eh. But uh, along the way, uh, binago naman ng, ano, ng DBM at inilagay na nila sa, na, sa general appropriations. So are we saying it uh, it's been amended because uh, the way I see it the 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 um, the law has not yet been amended it maintains uh, still that it is separate from the general fund even if uh, it is not spent at year end so talaga may special account siya until today unless DBM is doing the opposite uh, but that requires a change in the law in Dipuba uh, yes, sir, Mr. yes, Mr. Chairman, kailangan ng batas yan kasi batas nga yun eh. But uh, we'll find out uh, if it was amended or not. Uh, hindi namin masyadong alam yung details. Uh, we'll make a report uh, immediately, Mr. Chairman. Yes, so Manong Del, parang hindi naman siya na-amend. Kaya nagtataka ako, bakit gusto nyo lipatin si Special Purpose Fund? Unless it's because uh, the optics aren't good and it all looks too big in GHQ. 
uh, in which case you want to put it in a lump sum. But uh, parang mas magulo yata yung ganun. Total, hindi naman magre-revert sa National Treasury yan hanggang sa year end. Uh, according to my uh, financial uh, staff, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, it reverts to the National Fund after one year or after uh, kung hindi magamit. Okay. Because it's I, uh, the regular I, appropriation. Perhaps I'd like a clarification because as, uh, as uh, we look at it, there doesn't appear to be any uh, change in the law. Um, so uh, I think uh, maybe you can update us kung may pagbabago para maintindihan namin kasi I was very confused by the earlier discussion with Senator Lacson. Uh, further, uh, the COA in the 2020 audit report, unlike uh, Apo Faustino, said that 41 projects worth $6.8 billion were not completed. Ngayon, ang sabi ni uh, Boy Faustino, eh, nasa 21 lang yan. Ngunit, nabasa rin namin at narinig natin yung ating uh, AFP spokesman yata ninyo, maybe Captain Jonathan Sapata, na ang sabi, 22 naman modernization projects as of the end of June. Alin ba talaga? 41, 22, o 21? Kasi litong-lito na po kami, saan tayo dito? At uh, alam naman natin na terribly delayed na itong Horizon 1 and 2. With, with, with the permission of Senator Aimee, yes, ma'am, like may DBM tayo na participant dito, baka pwede sila sumagot niya sa tanong mo. I si don't know, that's right. DBM, are you around? Para maklarify lang tayo lang. Yeah. Wala na naman. Yes. Kapag mag-block kayo ng budget, and then kapag uh, mag-approve kayo ng budget, nawawala kayo, DBM. Yes, he's rich here. Yeah. Ang yeah. dami yeah. dito, yeah. Dela, Dela, Dela Peña, Dizon, puro DBM. Tama po. Yes, Mr. Chair. We are <laughs> attending here, Mr. Chair. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Uh, please, uh, you have the floor. Namulito mo yung sagot. Uh, excuse me, Dibem. Namulito mo yung tanong ni Senator Ani Marcos kay yes, Secretary uh, Luisana. Pwede ikaw sumagot? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, go ahead po. O, nagbago ba yung batas sa uh, modernization? Hindi na ba sila special account? Puro, puro... Uh, uh, one fund policy na pati yung modernization fund. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, hindi po nagbabago yung patas and uh, as of now, they start, it is still the trust fund as established under the law. Uh, the status now, ma'am, is that uh, we are coming up with the final guidelines, implementing guidelines of that. So, uh, while the fund has guidelines already been set up. Patas, yung guidelines ngayon lang, 2021, uh, parang nakakatawa naman. Ma'am, uh, we are uh, talking on the the revised AFP modernization plan. Okay, okay. So, but, the um, status of that, Mr. I'm so Chair. I'm uh, sorry, uh, yes, this is yes, Ms. Vega. Yes, yes. Oh. Yeah, sandali, sandali. Para magkarinigan tayo. Excuse me, excuse me. Yes, uh, that... Uh, the floor is with the uh, Senator Aime. Ma'am, go ahead. Debe, uh, you can respond later pagkatapos sa Senator Aime para hindi magbanggaan yung ating uh, salita. Go ahead, uh, Senator Aime, ma'am. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Ms. De La Vega. Itatanong ko, kasi bakit yung pagkaintindi ng DND ni Secretary mismo, eh, talagang re-revert yan at the end of the year. Ang liwaliwanag sa batas, and like you um, affirmed, uh, the law stands that is as it originally ha did, which is that there is no reversion at year end, regardless of whether it's spent or not, and is in fact maintained as a special account by the DBM. Is that correct, Pa? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, it's correct that it actually, it uh, there are two ways of looking at it. Uh, even if it's uh, set up as a regular... Uh, agency budget, as well as if it is spe special account in the general fund, it will still revert based on the GAA provision. So uh, the only difference is that when it is in the setup already in the trust fund, it will only be reissued once it expires. So nag expire din po yun, ma'am. The appropriation will expire even if it's under the regular agency budget or under a special account at the general fund, yung trust fund, ma'am. Uh, um, 
in operation the uh, DBM, in operation DBM, it has to be reappropriated uh, in the next year's budget, or uh, it's automatically held for the modernization fund. I'm confused. The law is so clear cut. I don't know why there is suddenly a, a secret reversion. Uh, yes, my, uh, Mr. Chair, it will still revert and it will need to be reappropriated once it expires and once it's not obligated. But How the good thing about... about because the law is so uh, directly in conflict with the operation of DBM, parang binago naman ninyo yung batas? Um, Ma'am, uh, only on the implementation. Yes, uh, but you know, you are not ready. allowed. I think... Uh, Neither DBM nor any of the agencies is allowed to amend by operation any of the laws. Maliyata yun. Uh, Madam Chair, we are not actually uh, changing the operation of the law of what's provided for under the revised AFP modernization plan. So, but if uh, you leave, it's but still if to it be. Reverts, it effectively, effectively and operationally. Um, DBM has amended the law because it uh, it uh, reverts the fund and uh, and holds it, requiring a new appropriation. There is no such thing in the law. So I think uh, this, perhaps, Mr. Chairman, is exactly what uh, our colleague Senator uh, Tolentino has decried time and again, that uh, in operation through uh, IRR and other guidelines, uh, DBM as well as other uh, agencies have in fact amended and in many cases contravened the spirit of the law. Yeah, yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman, if I may intervene. Uh, I, agree with, I agree with Senator Marcos. In fact, I have prepared 55 privileged speeches uh, <laughs> to that for 55 national government agencies, uh, just as an uh, interjection. Thank you, Madam uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think that this requires investigation and inquiry, exactly as uh, Senator Tolentino has said, because there is no amendment in the law whatsoever, and yet we are compelling the Modernization Fund of the AFP to be reverted, reappropriated, and uh, released anew time and again at year end. This is not the intention at all. It was a special account at its... Uh, um, birth and it remains so today. So, yun lang. Uh, maybe we could consider that. Uh, and then I'd like to go back to my other question. Kasi nga, uh, kanina sa interpolation ni Senator uh, Lakson, ang sabi, 21 projects. Pero dun sa COA finding, 41 projects ang hindi pa kompleto. Tapos may official statement uh, through a uh, certain Navy officer um, Chief of Public Affairs na sinabi 22 so, modernization. Yes, kung yung delivery. Uh, who wants to respond to that? Uh, to the question of Senator Jaime? Oh, para we're just settled and we can uh, take this COA finding off the books. Yes, ma'am. Uh, right. uh, Mr. Chair may be recognized. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam, uh, Your Honor. Uh, for the the status of the AFP modernization pro projects, uh, allow me first to go with uh, Horizon One. Mm -hmm. For Horizon One, uh, I heard you. You don't have to repeat what you told us, Kanina. Sinabi mo na na twenty one ongoing at different stages of procurement. Horizon Two for capability development, nine completed, a hundred pending. I heard that. Um, what uh, occurred with the COVA report? Have you uh, answered them and rectified the uh, 41 that they maintain in their audit report? Uh, yes, Your, Your Honor. Uh, we have uh, already, we, we actually had uh, have uh, coordinated with the, uh, the Commission on Audit, ma'am, and uh, we, we have uh, rectified uh, the, the errors uh, Kung meron ma'am ma'am na hindi, hindi nagtugma ng mga errors. Yes, okay. Uh, yes, I, I would just like to inquire regarding that because uh, there's a level of confusion uh, regarding the reports. No? So, sana maklear na nirin ninyo yan sa COA. And while we're, at the, we're, and while we're discussing the COA, there is also a finding 
of unauthorized bank accounts. Medyo matagal na rin to eh. Um, what is this 1.8 billion in unauthorized bank accounts repeatedly flagged um, by the Commission on Audit? There are 20 bank accounts in different banks, uh, Land Bank, BBP, including the United Coconut Planters. May we be enlightened on uh, this COA observation, Bob? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. This... Uh... COA bank accounts are now being uh, closed, uh, most of it. We have, uh, there were 20 uh, unauthorized bank accounts. Uh, as of this date, we have closed already 15. Uh, we have one account intended for modernization projects with UCPB. And uh, we have accounts that, request, that we requested to be retained and uh, with audit balance to be returned to the BTR or the Bureau of Treasury. This is, uh, th these are four. So right now, Bob, we have already closed the... How much were you, how much were you going to return to Treasury? For the Treasury, Bob, uh, we, we returned to the Treasury the, the 15... So almost 2 billion floating around in these mysterious bank accounts. Eh. So, sana masoli na yan para maklear na yan. Yes, that's uh, that's true, ma'am. Uh, we have returned already the the uh, the most of the we have closed already most of the bank accounts, but we have account intended for modernization projects. Yes, this is I the biggest that. right now. We, oh, so this you is uh. Ang isosoli sa treasury or nasoli na or pwedeng isoli para matapos nito. Malaki laki rin eh, two billion. Yes, ma'am. A, a bulk of this is one point three billion. Uh, with UCPB, but this is for modernization uh, projects. That's why hindi ma'am namin, ito, ito ma'am yung uh, ginagamit ma'am namin na pambayad doon sa mga modernization program o sa mga, mga gamit na kinawa natin to the modernization program. Why so ito ma'am yung... Why isn't it part of uh, the usual budget? Bakit kinakailangan pa na may uh, unauthorized bank account? Ba't ganun? Tapos UCP ba, UCPB pa, hindi pa, hindi pa GFI. Wala, nagbubulat lang ako kasi that's not uh, normal practice, hindi po wala. Dati sir, dati po. Uh, Ma'am, uh, this is an uh, unauthorized uh, government bank that uh, young UCPB, ma'am, uh, it used to be, ma'am. used to be an authorized uh, government bank. That's why nandito po, ma'am, siya. Okay. That's um, why hindi na, ma'am, siya authorized bank na ginagamit ang ating gobyano. That's why it was tagas an authorized. I'm just uh, concerned, uh, DBM, uh, is, this, uh, is this allowed? I'm just mystified because uh, the modernization fund is part and parcel of your GHQ uh, overall fund. Eh, bakit bigla yung pera niya, uh, almost 2 billion, is being parked in unauthorized bank accounts? Even if the UCPB was previously authorized as a depository, certainly this is not uh, normal practice. Uh, maybe DBM can shed light on this. Pinapayagan ba natin na may sarili ba? Pinatagawan yung iba. DBM, are you around? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. You have the floor. Please respond to Senator Aimee's uh, query. Actually, uh, Mr. Chair, as far as the retention of some amounts in other banks other than the government depository banks, there were already uh, issued, uh, there were already issuances on that respect that they are supposed to, uh, under EO338, they are supposed to uh, deposit to the treasury those accounts which are not uh, supposed to be long-standing accounts which are not being already used by the by the agencies and uh, recently also we have this, issued uh, uh, this in Vega, i just want to ask you because i'm in complete agreement that this is a, 
um, this is not uh, a, a sanctioned practice. And uh, I am wondering, uh, regarding the statement that uh, they will continue to maintain at least five of the 20 accounts and not return the 1.3 billion to the uh, usual uh, uh, funds of the GHQ. Pwede ho ba yun? They'll just keep hanging on to the 1.3 and they will continue to maintain five accounts in various banks, not necessarily um, recognized government depositories. Mr. Chair, uh, the, uh, the issuances that were already made for the previous years are supposed to be complied with by the by all the different government agencies. So they will have to take that up, of course, with our Treasury, with the COA, and with the DBM. Because they will have to, all agencies will have to abide by those issuances. Yes, I'm aware of that. Thank you very much, DBM, and I'm in full agreement with you. So regardless of the fact, General, um, and Apo Faustino, I think there were others who responded. Regardless of the fact that you are using these funds for uh, modernization, they should not be uh, held in unauthorized bank accounts. And you cannot hang on to 1.3 billion just because you have ongoing uh, procurements. Parang mali yata yun. I think uh, we should be uh, warned that this is not uh, sanctioned practice. I know. So I think Kowa was right in uh, waving uh, the uh, red flag here. So maybe we can rectify that and uh, address the issue um, Kowa raised and now uh, reiterated by DBM. Which brings me to another issue, and that is uh, the DND has been repeatedly flagged by Kowa for transactions with PITC. We're fully aware of the Philippine Army with excess balances and utilized fund transfers of upwards of 2.4 billion, already three years spending. Air Force, the same account balance of 472 million, uh, cannot be ascertained. Ito pa yung magulo, yung Air Force at saka may net differential pa. Kaya nagugulo na ako dito kasi hindi pa magkatugma yung uh, libro ng Air Force saka yung libro ng uh, PITC. Kasi may return, may rejected, hindi ko po maintindihan eh. So is there anyone who can uh, tell us about this? Because there are net differentials as well with the Office of Civil Defense with unrecorded deliveries. Uh, for example, ano, sa Air Force, 471 million ang nakalista. But there's a net difference, 386 million ang nasa PITC. Ano ba itong nangyayari sa mga fund transfer? At saka sa Army naman, nagtatagal ng tatlong taon, yung halos 2.4 billion, eh wala namang pinanggagamitan. And it goes on, ano? Uh, PITC also has unimplemented the projects with the GHQ, with the Veterans Office, Yung sa veterans nga, sa PIBAW, eh, nasa three years na, wala pang ini-implement. And um, it goes on and on. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about this PITC issues? And uh, thereafter, of course, inevitably, the other procurement service, the PSDBM. Once again, as I said, the Office of Civil Defense having a net discrepancy of unrecorded deliveries pa. Hindi pa magkatukma yung PSDBM at yung uh, Office of Civil Defense. Can we be updated? Baka naman na-rectify na po ito. Sinong uh, gustong sumagot sa tanong ni Senator Aime? Yung, yung pala, Senator Aime, yung AAP pala, hindi pala pupunta sa PSDBM. Ang PNP lang pala at saka yung BAP, Ang uh, availing the schedule of PSDBM, ang EP pala, PITC pala ang uh, kailangan pinupuntahan. Hindi! Uh, uh, sino pwede mag-sagot sa? Yung AFP pumupunta rin sa PSDBM, yung Air Force may 3 million, Navy may 37 million, cannot be ascertained, may discrepancy pa sa PSDBM. Ganon din yung Office of Civil Defense. In short, yung AFP suki sa dalawa. <laughs> yung meron rin pala 
Ah, uh, sino ang gusto sa magot? Boboy. Postino? Sir. Ah, uh, si Sir Rosara. Ah, uh, the Air Force will uh, reply for their uh, part of this question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, the the Carlos. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, for the Air Force, we only have a remaining uh, amount at the ITC at 18.1 million and this is uh, ongoing sir it will be delivered soon while the balance of 1.466 million will be reverted back to the air force ito na po ma'am yung uh, current, uh, balance with the ITC sa treasury parang ano ba ang ginagawa natin bakit irerevert sa air force yan di ba sa treasury na yan matagal din eh tatlong taon na eh Yes, ma'am. Uh, it would be referred to the Treasury po, ma'am. Uh, ibig sabihin yung, it was formerly uh, funds from the Air Force, but it will be returned uh, direct to the Bureau of Treasury, ma'am. Yes, okay. um, yes. I would like to inquire also why there is a net difference between the Air Force and the PITC regarding fund transfers. And there are residual fund balances from completed projects that were not returned by PITC. May utang sila eh, sa inyo. Hindi naman ninyo uh, clinic claim. Kasi may kulang, short yung uh, diniliver ng 1.5 million. Uh, ba't ganun? Ma'am, based po dito sa aming uh, accounts, ma'am, yung re residuals in the amount of 1.466 will be uh, returned. Yung uh, other amounts remain Totaling to 18.11 uh, are still for delivery, ma'am. So partial delivery po yung iba dito, ma'am, from PITC. Yes, may I just manage so, that? Ma yung last uh, uh, reconciling uh, meeting with the PITC and the Philippine Air Force. Yes, I was uh, going to say that uh, it's uh, incumbent upon us and very urgent given the uh, age of these transfers that uh, you already reconcile books kasi napakagulo naman ito. May finding pa na PITC is procuring supplies and equipment at the very, very low deli uh, delivery rate of, of 35%. Eh, bakit lipat pa rin kayo ng lipat dyan at hindi naman ninyo kiniklaim yung delivery, hindi naman sinisingil yung uh, unspent funds, eh, humihingi tayo ng karagdagang pera eh, iniiwan naman pala kung saan-saan Yes ma'am uh, actually po, itong uh, mga pera na ito na nasa PIT these are old uh, agency transfers itong recent po ma'am na 2020 and 2021 hindi na po tayo nag-transfer to PITC Okay, but uh, the more so, considering that these are aging accounts, the more so, dapat mas masigasig tayo mag-claim dyan. Um, the Air Force, while I have you on deck, the Air Force also has um, funds with uh, the PSDBM. So despite unserved agency procurement requests of 3.26 million, a total of 2.34 million was once again transferred during the year, resulting in the accumulation of funds with PSDBM. What is that about? Uh, yes, ma'am. Kasi po, deep based so, dito. Lipat ng pera sa PSDBM, eh, sinabihan na na wag. Yes, ma'am. Actually po, ma'am, uh, uh, tinigilan na po namin yung pag-transfer uh, sa PSDBM for the procurement of commonly used supplies uh, kasi po this is administrative order number 17 sorry this finding po was 2020 ah. so kailan tinigil yan this is very recent yes ma'am I'll check on that po ma'am sige no these amounts at the end of the day are not very significant they are uh, meager sums yet it uh, really uh, indicates a uh, very messy and uh, um, irresponsible manner of accounting. Parang nakakatakot naman yata ito kung bakit ganito. Maybe I'll just request na lang an update on these COA findings. Uh, perhaps in certain cases, they've already been rectified at nagsulian na ng pera. 
But uh, maybe we can ask also the Office of Civil Defense, Mr. Chairman, about the 56.282 million discrepancy between OCD and PSDBM. Bakit iba-iba uh, yung kwenta ninyo? Anybody wants to respond? Mr. Chairman? Uh, with, with the permission of Senator Aime, uh, okay lang sa'yo. Sige po na si Senator Nancy. Go ahead, Senator Nancy Binay. Hindi, hindi pa, padagdag lang dun sa tanong ni Senator Aime. Um, di ba pag naglilipat kasi ng funds sa PSDBM or even I think PITC, may, may 4% service fee. Definitely. Di ba? Kung hindi na, na de-deliver ka agad ng PITC or PSDBM, wala bang ka ka counterpart yon as a penalty? fee on the part of uh, EITC or PSDBM, oh, diba? Yes, dapat may LD, may liquidated damages, diba? Yes. Uh, wala bang ganun arrangement oh, kung nililipat? Yes, and something. kung wala, anong hindi ba di nadi-discount itong 4% service fee? Because apparently parang hindi maganda yung service na binibigay nila. Yan lang pa, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, so far, si Ito Nancy, mukhang the relationship is one way. The, the relationship is not mutual. It's not mutual. One way relationship yan. As I observe, so far, naging chip lane pa ako eh. Alam ko yung uh, relationship dyan. One way. Oh, At, ang ang, 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 ang ano lang, ang P.I. lang. Yeah. Kaya kanya ang sir, General Canlas, if uh, may ganun ba, yung sinayit ni Senator Binay na just in case failure to deliver or delayed in the delivery of the procured the goods and services, the PSDBM or PITC should be penalized. Uh, kay kayo, nagbabayad kayo ng 4% dun sa kanila, di ba? Sila ba hindi napipenalize for uh, delayed the delivery of the goods and services that uh, they procured for you? Wala. Wala po, sir. Uh, si, uh, there you go, uh, Senator Dazi Binay. Wala daw. Okay. Dehado uh, talaga. Deha para lumalabas, dehado, Mr. Chairman. Dehado, dehado, dehado ko. Thank you, sir. Kawawa. Kawawa ang AP. Kawawa ang AP, dehado. See, uh, Mr. Chairman, not to take up too much time, and if they uh, really don't have the records on hand, then General Canlas is uh, incapable of answering. Hihingi na, lang yung ako, hihingi na lang ng update dito sa Philippine Army, Air Force. Nakalista sila lahat, the GHQ, PBAO. Uh, Navy, Civil Defense, and I think Senator Laxon has uh, some insight. Yeah, very quickly, would, every, would anybody know kung saan pumunta yung 4% service fee? Pwede ka DBM dito, sir. Pwede rin tanongin. Kasi PSDBM. Di ba? PSDBM. Mr. Chairman, I think yung di ba yung sa PSDBM, dun nila ginagamit yung operating expense nila. Yeah, but sa PITC, I'm not familiar kung saan napupunta ho yung 4%. Baka ready nyo nung GOCC. Yeah, I asked that question kasi yung 42 billion na tinransfer ng DOH, no, this is... Side issue to, no? Kung 4% no, that's 1.6 billion, ha? Service fee. So, interesado lang ako, ha? How much, sir? How much? How much? That's 1.6 billion. Kung 1.6 billion na peso, ang tinransfer ng DOH sa PSDBM, ang 4% no is at least 1.6 billion peso. So, paano inatado yun? Iyan ang tanong. DBM. Nandito mga DBM, sir. Peace DBM. It's under DBM. Procurement service of DBM. DBM, can you respond? DBM? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Our apologies, but the PS is separate and distinct from our bureau. Our apologies. Ang tanong na naman, alam ba natin kung saan napupunta yung 4%? Uh, we believe, sir, that it's being used for their operational expenses. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. Diba sabi nila, they're using it for their operations because they do not derive any uh, subsidy from uh, the national government. Kaya lang nakakapagtaka kasi lumad dumadami yung kanilang transaction, lumiliit yung kanilang revenue at lumalaki yung utang. Nakakatuwa nga yung PSDBMA. <laughs> 
Ah, ma'am, we can ask if uh, we have a uh, representative from DTI here uh, for the concerns about PITC. They uh, understand that PITC is under DTI. Meron ba tayong DTI dito, representative? Ah, wala, wala. Ah, wala pala, ma'am. Yes, yeah. uh, Mr. Chairman, not to belabor the point and not to consume all the time and hours of our subcommittee, may I uh, simply request, therefore, that uh, the uh, agencies and sub-agencies represented here, uh, from the Army to the Air Force, according to my notes, JHQ, PBAO, uh, Navy, and Office of Civil Defense, just give us a list of fund transfers to either PSDBM or PITC and an update on the status of those funds. Similarly, I'd like to inquire on uh, the settlement of those unauthorized bank accounts to the tune of 1.8 billion. Kung ano na yung status, uh, I think uh, General Canlas earlier uh, gave us a summary, but we would like a more detailed uh, breakdown. And uh, um, in the meantime, I think I would just like to express concern, as Senator Lacson uh, did earlier, uh, what happens with the unpaid military pensions of $28.820 billion um, if uh, for some reason we do not successfully hurdle the 18th Congress? Kasi malapit ng patapos eh. What are our Sir, plans? Sino makasagot? B, plan C. I don't know, Secretary Lorenzana, please. Uh, before you respond, si Secretary Lorenzana, sir, uh, two points. Ang sinasabi ni Sito Aimee, mean, una, magsabit kayo ng uh, list ng uh, fund transfers to PITC and PSDBM. And another point is, uh, ito, what happened to doon sa... Bank accounts. Big, Pensions until 2018, ma'am? Ah, yes. Firstly, yung tungkol sa PSDBM and, uh, and uh, yung PITC. Ikalawa, yung mga uh, COA flag and authorized bank deposits, including uh, non-government depositaries like UCPB, which uh, we were just told, quite alarmingly, they intend to maintain at $1.3 billion and refuse to revert to the uh, Bureau of Treasury. Medyo bawal yata yung sinasabi na yun. Ikatlo, uh, ano ang plan B natin dito sa unpaid military pensions for this year kung sakasakali hindi nga mapasa dahil nga patapos na yung Congress at mag -e election na? And, uh, Senator, uh, Secretary Lorenzana, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sabutin ko muna yung una, yung sa P PITC at sa PSDBM, ano? Uh, we will comply with the uh, with the requirements of uh, the good senator. Um, ito lang masasabi namin kasi meron akong labas sa kayo narito na from, uh, from my staff that there is a law that mandates us to utilize the PITC and uh, BSTVM in the procurement of uh, articles. You know? And uh, I believe the 4% uh, admin fee is also there in that law. Uh, I suggest that uh, the uh, Congress will look into that law, how relevant it, it is uh, at this time. Pangalawa, doon naman sa Ariridges, pakimalik ulit. Narito ko niyo na sa ano ko eh, yung lector ko eh, tinanggal niyo. Uh, ito yung, uh, it, ito yung um, breakdown ng 28.8 billion uh, pension requirement, um, yung unpaid. Number one is pension arrears and differentials, 2000 to 2013, which is 4.7. Matagal na itong uh, arrears na to. 2000 to 2013, 13 years. Remaining pension differentials for calendar year 2018, ito yung uh, hindi kagad na ibayad, nagpasa tayo ng batas, hindi kagad na implement. So ito yung parang back pay nila, 20.3 billion pesos. Lump sum differential for Fiscal year 2018 to 2019, in line with the Congress Joint Resolution Number no. One, Series 2018, which is 2.8 billion. Prior years claims under Civil Code 1144, 265 million in unfunded prior year and posthumous claim 600 mi uh, million. Ito po unfunded prior years that pagkapun uh, <clears throat> namatay yung pensioner hindi ka agad nakatransfer doon sa widow 
yung uh, benefits, sometimes it will take uh, six months to one year, yun yung uh, unfunded na, uh, kasi binabalik kagad ng, ng AFP yung pera doon sa DBM, uh, sa, sa Bill of Treasury, and uh, the beneficiary will, uh, requ- will uh, requ- request for transfer of the, of the pension to them, So sa tagal po ng ano ito, sa dami ng mga namamatay at uh, yung mga delay, umabot na ng 606 million yung uh, unfunded prior year and posthumous claim, uh, Mr. Chairman. So total, 28.8 billion. Yes, uh, Mr. Secretary, my concern is that uh, while uh, the Senate, to Senator Laxon, Chairman De La Rosa, including the minority, leader and myself have been frantically working on the MUP Retirement and Pension Act. What are uh, we going to do given the very tight frame? Uh, if there is uh, no passage of the law and also no significant increase in the annual appropriations, ano yung pinaka-importante dito na kailangan isettle? And are there any other recommended plan Bs? Man, I think uh, if we can pay the whole 28.8 billion uh, at one time, I think it will assuage the uh, complaints of the uh, pensioners. Because uh, I receive practically uh, messages every day asking when their uh, arrears will be paid and the unfunded uh, posthumous claims. I think there are uh, uh, tens of thousands of these people yeah. also waiting uh, for this uh, money to be given to them. So kung pwede pong magbigay tulad sa kanila at one time or kahit na i-call natin, installment natin uh, for the next uh, two or three years, I think uh, that will also reduce the indebtedness of the government. Alin ho dyan ang dapat unahin? Yung uh, limang-luma na, yung mga arrears and differentials or yung mga uh, posthumous and other claims? Uh, sa tingin ko po ngayon dito dahil it will uh, involve everybody mm-hmm. ay yung remaining uh, pension differentials for fiscal year 2018 which is 20 uh, billion 20, 20.3 billion yeah. kasi po uh, uh, kasama na lahat yan eh even the, the uh, widows the beneficiaries will also get something from this uh, fund kung ito may bigay natin 20.3 billion Yes, we're very deeply worried, uh, Secretary Lorenzana, because as you know, uh, this is a very tight uh, COVID-proofing budget. And at the same time, for lack of material time, if I must play devil's advocate, uh, we're really coming up to the end of this Congress. So, yun lang, yung pinoproblema lang natin, may plan B sana tayo rito kung ano maisip ninyo. But uh, Senator Laxon, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Binay are all here together with Senator Tolentino, and we hope we can help. Thank you. That will be all, Chairman De La Rosa. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Senator Amy. So I would uh, go back to Sir- Secretary Lorenzana, sir. Ito nga, itong problema, 28.28 billion, 820 million uh, na unfunded AP pension requirement. Paano... Paano ba natin ito hanapan ng paraan? Dahil alam nyo, k- kami palagi ni Senator Lacson ang binabas ng mga retired na uh, AAP PNB personnel tungkol dito eh. Palagi silang galit dahil uh, sabi nila, porque senador na kayo dyan, pinabayaan na lang nyo kami mga retired, mga retirees. Pa- paano? Ha? Tulungan natin ito, Sir Masod. We were willing to help you. Paano natin hanapan ng paraan ito? Kami palaging pinapagalitan ng mga retirees na bakit um, hindi nyo na kaso ito. Uh, samantala, yung iba mga civilian retirees, wala reklamo. Kami na, na awis, dugo at buhay ang sinusugal namin dito, bakit hindi nyo ito maasikaso? Para bang mabalabas na kami ni Senator Laksun, eh, pinabayaan namin sila. Ano ang masasabi mo, Secretary Rizana, sir? Mr. Chair, we have the same uh, problem kasi pati ako, nakakatanggap din ako ng mga complaints na yan eh, kung bakit daw pinapam- pinakabayaan ko daw sila when I'm here also. So, ang, uh, I'll repeat my uh, recommendation a while ago to the uh, Senator, uh, Senator uh, Aimee. Kung, kung mauna natin may bigay itong 20.3 billion na remaining pension differentials for fiscal year 2018, 
I think this will uh, kasi lahat to kasama eh kasama to lahat ng pensioners plus yung mga 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 beneficiaries mga widows lahat to makakatanggap samantalang yung iba diyan yung pension na uh, already this para there's, there's a set there's a sector there what will receive yung lump sum differential naman yung mga nagretire to eh nagretire ng lump sum na hindi maibigay so kunti lang yan prior years claim 265 million kunti lang itong pinaka importante itong uh, uh, remaining pension differentials for fiscal year 2018 ito yung palagi ko natatanggap ng mga tax eh kung kailan nila matatanggap ito Mr. Chairman yung nga sir you should uh, from your end you should uh, give us uh, proper recommendation para magawa natin mahanapan ito ng paraan Uh, anyway, the chairman of the of finance committee of the Senate is uh, willing to help us. Dahil uh, in the end, tayo rin naman talaga ang uh, pagbubula, pagbibigyan uh, ng, uh, ng uh, upakan ng mga uh, retire na yan. Kung uh, wala mangyari dito, tayo, tayo, tayo pa rin sila babalikan nila. So, yes, harap tayo na para, sir. At saka yung paraan sa mga... Sabihin nila, pa, mabuti kayo, pareho tayo retired. Ikaw, retired na kayo, prosenador kayo. Ikaw, retired ka, pero Secretary of National Defense ka. Kami dito, retired na masasakitin. Hindi na makakalakad, hindi na makakatayo. Uh, huwag na, huwag naman yung kami pabayaan. So, yan talaga ang sentiments of the ground. So, tayo ang dito sa taas, sir. Harap tayo ng paraan. So, we're waiting for your recommendations kung paano natin gawin ito para, para ma-solve natin ito. Para lang makatulong, ano? Laki-laki yung yes. 28.8 billion. Mahirap yata maibuo yan this year. Sabi nga ni Secretary Del, baka 2 to 3 years, eh, gumawa na rin tayo ng ibang planong installment. Ang hirap pilihan eh. Uh, like you said, it's all or nothing of the 28.8. You don't know which one has priority. But uh, I think we'll have to impose some priorities because the likelihood of the entire sum being released is very, very low in these uh, difficult times. Yun lang, pampraktikal lang kung ang talaga yung prioridad, even if it's uh, inhumane and uh, uh, virtually impossible to do so. Thank you, Senator Ivy. <laughs> Wala, naubusan ko na lang sagot, sir. Kaya sigurad tayo sa Rizana. Mr. Chairman, kasi hindi naman kami nag-appropriate ng pera eh. So, it, uh, I will have to the problem to Congress to appropriate money for this. Uh, we will refer this matter to the, to the Chairman of the Finance Committee kung paano ito. Kasi ang gagawin lang naman dito is uh, give and take. Take. Take away from the other and give it to the most uh, urgent uh, need. Ganun lang gagawin niya. Babalasahin lang niya itong uh, ating budget. So, basta tayo, tulungan natin dito. <laughs> Kahirap ito. Uh, kung magbabasa ka lang sa mga mga commissar, eh, alam ko nagbabasa ko man siguro, commit na mga retiree dyan. Talagang, uh, um, talagang, para bang uh, sabihin mo na parang inutil na tayo dito, wala tayong magawa sa kanila sitwasyon, na pareho naman tayo ang retiree. Uh, hanapan natin ito na para sir. Uh, si Rito Lacson is very much willing to help. Alam na, mas uh, marami siyang alam dito sa budget kaysa, kaysa akin. Eh. He has been here in the Senate for uh, many years already, so magpatulong tayo. Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, go ahead, sir. Sir, I statement. May I suggest, uh, Mr. Chairman, for Congress to also that whenever Congress will pass a law that, uh, that needs appropriation, eh, alam na natin kaagad kung saan kukunin. Katulad doon sa doubling of the salaries of uh, the uniform personnel, uh, we should have uh, projected or, or so na maraming arrears dito at saan kukunin yung pera. Uh, in fact, even the doubling of the salaries, uh, parang mabigat masyado po initially, pero ngayon naman, okay naman lahat. But uh, all uh, legislation that needs money is, uh, so na, alam naman natin kung saan kukunin yung pera para hindi mahirapan yung gobyerno. Thank you, sir. Yes, I think kasama yan, sir, sa paggawa ng batas, lalo-lalo na pag uh, involves money. Hindi man siguro tayo basta-basta magpapasa ng batas na walang corresponding source of fund na ma-identify to fund that uh, particular law. Uh, ginagawa po natin yan na uh, But anyway, um, good reminder for us. Uh, kung I would like to give the floor to Senator uh, Tol Tolentino 
for your questions. The chairman, uh, unless my other colleagues will be asking, these are these are really light questions uh, addressed to Secretary Lorenzana and perhaps the Army Chief. So I, I will not uh, extend uh, inquisitorial questions relative to finance. These are light questions, uh, Mr. Chairman. First, understand next week uh, the Army golf course will close. Is, is that correct? Uh, from the Army Chief, you can... Sarado na ba yan? Uh, it will not uh, close, sir. It will still be open, sir. But but I but I heard that there will be uh, a new operator or a new construction development in the area would be would be is now being planned. Is is that correct? Uh, your orders, uh, Mr. Chair. It's still a proposal, sir. But uh, nothing definite in the next coming days. Ola pong mangyaring closure, sir. So, ta talaga magaling ang army na pagandaan ito. Unahan lang kayo ng, ng Navy. I was trying to recruit Nesty Pitesio to join the army. But uh, she took her oath as a Philippine Navy. So, unahan kayo. Pero sa golf course, okay tayo. So, it, it will remain. Uh, thank you, sir. Next question. Uh, you can answer this, uh, General. Uh, Lieutenant General Zintina po, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the status of the army... Aviation Regiment. Is this is is this just an ad hoc uh, unit or is is this now permanent? Uh, because I was looking at the budget, para wala sila. Uh, what was the status of this, sir? Uh, the Army Aviation Regiment uh, was activated just a few years ago um, to provide for the air capability of the Philippine Army. Um, right now, the headquarters is based in uh, Fort Magsaysay. Um, we have uh, trained pilots. Uh, as of this date, we have 40 trained pilots. We have at least uh, 10 aircraft. Um, four fixed-wing aircraft and uh, six rotary aircraft. Um, the activities right now is uh, they are having proficiency flights. We have uh, not uh, been using this for operations as of yet. Um, it used to be the Army uh, Air Aviation, uh, uh, Army Aviation Regiment used to be a, a unit under the Armor Division, but it has uh, been classified now as a Philippine Army Major Unit, although we have yet to regularize the unit because uh, we have a, a, a standard of... Uh, um, um, recognizing a unit as a major unit kung na-achieve na nila yung mga readiness uh, levels. As of now, uh, hindi pa natin naabot yung personal readiness, uh, training readiness, uh, even equipment readiness. So that's why uh, it may take some time uh, even before we can consider it as a regular uh, Army major unit. Kaya nga po, sir, uh, limited pa rin po yung budget na nakasama ngayon sa proposed natin for 2022. So, so how, uh, if that is the case, parang that's uh, a chicken and egg situation, horse and cart, how will they achieve personnel and uh, unit uh, readiness if they don't have the necessary budgetary support? Uh, it's, it's like uh, waiting for something to happen when the... Uh, appropriate resources are not yet there. So, how, how do we achieve this, sir? For now, sir, uh, we have been uh, augmenting the unit with additional personnel. Of course, we have uh, competing requirements. Uh, as of now, we have added more personnel, assigning uh, uh, other personnel from other units to the, the aviation regiment. And uh, Ang inano kasi natin, sir, kung makaabot ng R2 readiness level, that's the time na maging regular uh, major unit na po yung aviation regiment. Thank you, sir. We look forward to that. Siguro two, two years from now. With, with, with the permission of Senator Tolentino, I'd just like to, to manifest na 
uh, a truly modernized uh, armed forces of the Philippines should not be reliant to the Philippine Air Force pagdating sa air assets. Dapat uh, pag may kailangan ng aeroplano ang army, may sarili siyang papaliparin. Hindi siya mag-request sa Air Force. Pag ang Marines may kailangan movement na using air assets, hindi na mag-request sa Air Force siya. May sarili sila magagamit. Pag ang Navy may kailangan, sila na ang sarili at their own uh, volition and control yung kanilang mga air assets. Dapat, yan dapat ang ating uh, modernized uh, military, modernized armed forces. Baka ma maunahan pa yung Marines ng uh, ng uh, Philippine National Police. Marami ng irasis sa Philippine National Police. Baka doon kayo manghiram kung kailanganin ninyo. <laughs> Sir, go ahead. Uh, Secretary Lohan, Sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may mix uh, some statement on this um, matter, yung helicopters. No? At the start of my uh, stint uh, as the Secretary of Defense, I asked the Air Force, what do they think if we transfer the helicopters to the Army? Ang sagot nila, Mr. Chair, hindi na kami Air Force, sir, kasi wala lang pamuli pa rin. Kasi po, konti lang yung ibang sikap na mas marami yung helicopters. Now, under uh, ideal circumstances, dapat talaga yung, yung, yung mga helicopters, because, because these are close air support aircrafts, eh, transport of troops, and everything, supply, evacuation. Dapat talaga nasa Army yan. If you look at the armies uh, in the neighborhood, mga neighbors natin, army ang may hawak ng helicopters eh. And, <coughs> and uh, kaya lang, before, before we do that, siguro naman we should beef up the uh, capabilities of the Air Force as really Air Force. Talaga Air Force yan. Uh, if you look at the U.S. Army, merong U.S. Army sa kanila lahat yung Huey. Ang ngayon, Black Hawk na sila ngayon. The Marines, uh, U.S. Marines, meron din sila sarili. Pero hindi sila ang sarili yung helicopter. So, they can... Harrier, sir. Yung Harrier. Yung nag-vertical take-off. Harrier ba yun? Yeah, yung kanilang uh, vertical take-off. Oh. Yung Osprey. Meron silang ganun. So, until such time, siguro that we can uh, develop the Philippine uh, Air Force into a real uh, Philippine Air Force. Meron silang mga uh, multiple fighters, mga malalaking transport. Sa kanila yung transport, the C-130s will not be given to the Army. And plus other uh, support aircrafts na kailangan nila din. I think uh, because we have a very small armed forces, hindi naman tayo pwedeng develop ng support systems, isa sa Navy, isa sa, isa sa Marines, isa sa Army, at sa Air Force. I do more sa Air Force ngayon yung mga helicopters and try to the other services, yung Army, continue developing their um, small aircraft para kung mag-transition yan, hindi na sila mahirapan. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that uh, explanation, uh, Secretary Rosana. Go ahead, uh, Senator Tondi. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I was about to to ask some questions relative to acquisition of vessels or boats for the Philippine Army, similar to other jurisdictions, but I will no longer ask that. I would like to, I forgot to congratulate Secretary Lorenzana. Under your term, pinakamaraming, uh, we have the Tocano, uh, pinakamaraming uh, Air assets, pinakamaraming naval assets, so uh, you should be proud of that uh, legacy, sir. Uh, you are about to answer, sir, or uh, to comment? Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, Chairman, na alin yung barko na para sa Philippine Army. There was a time in the past when the Philippine Army actually organized the Philippine Army Seaborne Brigade, which was stationed in Hulu. Ang uh, commander niyan, si uh, Commodore Ichibiria. Atawag naman sa kanya, Commodore, kahit na bigyan ng general. And it was a very effective one to uh, patrol the uh, areas doon sa Hulo, din Basilan, and everything there. Dahil uh, that's where the uh, ingress and uh, ingress of uh, uh, the terrorists and yung makalaban natin from other countries. Ano? But now, uh, mayroon naman tayong sufficient small ships na fast, air, fast crafts that uh, belongs to the Navy. So, hindi na kailangan yun. So, thank you very much, uh, 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 Mr. Chair, uh, 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 Senator Ratolitino, for those kind words that we have done. Pero <clears throat> some, some of the equipment that we actually procured were started during the previous administration. Like yung dalawang frigates na binili natin, when I arrived, I just signed the contract. So, hindi, nila, hindi pinirmahan ni Secretary Gasmin yung kontrata na yun. Kasabi niya, ipapasad na wala nila sa akin sa, ano, sa susunod. 
so that they can scrutinize the contract. So what I did was to run through again to, to our legal system yung contract and it was uh, found it to be in order. Pinirmahan ko na. Pero yung um, legwork ginawa nila before. Uh, all others naman, uh, we did it during uh, this, this uh, administration, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Th thank you for that uh, historical video, uh, uh, Secretary Lorenzana. I hope the Philippine Army Aviation Regiment will not suffer that fate of the Philippine Army Seaborne Seaborn, uh, Unit uh, that will just gradually uh, fade away. So my, my next question, I'll not be asking about the uh, air assets accidents. It was asked by Senator Luxon. I will not ask about the Philippine Navy refleeting program. Uh, I asked something about the Army Aviation. Current, current events, uh, sir. Last night, the President mentioned something about uh, his uh, d dislike for for uh, participation in uh, uh, maritime exercise that would involve Australia, New Zealand, and United Kingdom. Two days ago, we had a maritime exercise in Mindoro. Uh, I think it was named Exercise Lumbas, if I'm not mistaken. So what, what would be the the effect of the president's pronouncement last night, but with a condition that he still will have to consult with the cabinet, and presumably that's going to be you, Secretary Lorenzana. Uh, what would be the net effect? Because I, I see that our uh, maritime readiness uh, in conjunction with other uh, maritime powers should not be should not should not be equated with with a, a political decision of Australia to to remove France from the radar in so far as the acquisition of submarines are concerned. So, what will be the effect of uh, that presidential announcement last night? And will you agree that uh, we should discard the exercises with the three countries I, I just mentioned, uh, Mr. Chairman? Um... I have uh, similar thoughts about that. <clears throat> you know, before the Australian government announced this uh, acquisition of nuclear uh, submarines, tinawagan na ko nung Minister of Defense nila. Nag-uusap kami. Sinabi niya kung bakit. And I told him that what concerns me uh, as here in the in the region dito sa, sa Southeast Asia is the introduction of this nuclear uh, powered submarine here that may tilt the balance of power, magkaroon ng arms race na naman, and uh, magkakaroon ng gulo-gulo ito. So, talagang masisira yung balance of power dito. And I was assured naman ng uh, Minister of Defense ng Australia that this is just a nuclear powered uh, submarine that can stay submerged for indefinite period of time, more silent, hindi na kaya hindi naririnig ang gusto nilang gawin dito. Hindi daw yan mag, it will not carry nuclear uh, tipped uh, uh, missiles or whatever. Uh, so sabi ko, at, uh, at any rate, sabi ko, our concern is still there. Uh, ma, 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 ano, uh, it, will be, uh, it will have some effect on the stability and peace in this uh, region. Now, going back to the pronouncement that uh, we should not uh, be participating in any exercises here with uh, the countries, Hindi naman tayo nakikipag-participate niyan, uh, Mr. Chairman, except yung ating uh, yearly neighbor exercise with the United States. Ano ang kaalan doon? No, dito, dito. Kamandag ba? Now, we will participate with the, with the uh, United States when the exercise called uh, RIMPAC, RIMA Pacific. And this is how it, this is held somewhere there in uh, Hawaii, uh, Guam area, in the Dito. Now, for exercises with the U.S. here, U.S. Uh, neighbor forces, dito ating ginagawa yun sa ating territorial waters, dito sa um, dagat between Palawan and uh, Mindanao, dito sa may natawag na Sulusi, because that is our territorial waters. Wala naman pakialam dyan yung ibang bansa kung dyan na mag-exercise eh. Now, what the president did not uh, authorize before uh, in 2016 is that to have uh, an exercise dito sa West Philippine Sea sa mga disputed areas. Huwag na muna dyan, sabi niya, dahil uh, 
mapa mayroong magagalit na mga bansa diyan kung diyan tayo mag-exercise so that's uh, the, the 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 policy of the president and we are still uh, implementing that wala tayo ditong individual participate in the freedom of uh, operations uh, freedom of uh, navigation operations ng uh, ng uh, US yung phone ops nila they come here they patrol there uh wala naman tayong pakialam dati ito ano yun kung naman yun eh that's an international waters they can go there anytime they want so that's the uh, policy Mr. President and uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, we, we we implement the policy of the President yes uh, but uh, Secretary with all due respect there was two days ago a maritime exercise involving the Philippine Navy exercise Lumbas with Australia and I agree with this uh, involving uh, BRP Antonio Luna in Mindoro. So, is this different from what you're referring to? Uh, I forgot about that, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Tama, meron nga sila. But this is just passage exercise. This is not a real exercise na involving uh, uh, may, may kalaban or whatever. It's just passage. Magkasama lang silang tumadaan sa isang lugar. And they are uh, within our territorial waters. Oh. So, again, my question is with the pronouncement of the President last night. Wala na po ito. Wala nang lumbas next year or year thereafter? Still, hindi naman ito, Mr. Chairman, hindi ito scheduled eh. And unlike the uh, rimpak of the US na every year ginagawa. Ito, tuwing meron nang bibisita yung mga wawa, the uh, New Zealand uh, ship will come here, sasalubungin ng ating, uh, ating barko. So, ang tawag nila is PASIX, di ba? PASIX exercise to and from another. Hindi yan gugagalagala diyan sa lugar na yan na uh, mayroon silang uh, scenario na kung marami kalaban that's not the case Mr. Chairman Thank you Mr. Secretary uh, thank you for clarifying that my other light question involves uh, our previous hearings uh, with the chairman as the also the chairman it, it involves the Mar Marawi city rehabilitation there are reports that and this is confirmed that we have a uh, that the army is planning to put up a division or a battalion within the confines of Marawi City and there are reports that there are conflicting ownership or resistance in so far as the landowners are concerned. How can we help? Uh, and it, is this true? Para mapabilis na? May I reply to that, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, um, practically... The whole of Marawi is a military reservation, Mr. Chairman. It's called uh, Camp Kitli during the time of the Americans. The, the Americans were the one who proclaimed that. And then when they left, uh, Lanjan Pumasok by yung mga civilians. And uh, now uh, only about a small portion of the city, of the, uh, of the camp, uh, or a large portion of the camp is already occupied by the city. Marami ng ano dun, eh, occupants. Now, uh, we are not planning to put a division in uh, in, in Marawi. Pero tayong brigade doon, uh, anong, anong kampo yun? One or third brigade, brigade nandun sa Samay Hill. Now, there is uh, a decision already by the president kasi one, during one of our meetings with the residents of Marawi, one of the concern is ano na naman daw sila yung lupa kasi yung kinakatayuan ng bahay nila hindi sa kanila kung bak kung hindi sa military and I referred that to the president ang sabi niya ibigay na natin sa kanila and that's what uh, the DAR the Department of Agrarian Reform is uh, proposing we already have the proposal in my table na i-distribute na natin yung uh, lupa na yon sa mga occupants mismo and ang, ang, ang hiling lang namin ng Army or JHQ is mag-iwan lang ng sufficient uh, area for use of the military in the uh, in Marawi. So, patapang pareko, Mr. Chair, uh, we will retain 200 hectares for uh, military purposes. Ang iba ibigay na natin kasi hindi naman natin mababawi yun kasi may nakatayo ng mga bahay. And, and sir, is that now, uh, if I may pursue this, is that now reflected in, in this uh, uh, 2022 budget? The, the construction or whatever of that uh, brigade headquarters uh, within the confines of Marawi City? Or do we get that from, do we source that from Marawi Rehabilitation Fund or from uh, NDRIMC? So is there, a, is there a budgetary allocation for this? 
Uh, wala, Mr. Chair, kasi nandun na yung brigade. Meron na silang structures doon that the brigade has been there for quite some time. What they need are uh, the uh, funds to improve the facilities of the brigade. So funds are not reflected in, in the current uh, budgetary request, uh, Mr. Chairman. So we can make adjustments uh, relative to this. That would be most appreciated, Mr. Chairman, if you can uh, put uh, some budget there, uh, including the fencing, kasi pagka walang fence yung mga kampo, eh, the likelihood of being squatted is very big. With the permission of the cha Chairman, perhaps we can uh, secure from uh, the DND or the Philippine Army the appropriate budgetary request uh, so that this, this can be included uh, before we go to the plenary. Yes, uh, Senator Tolentino, uh, we can do that. And, uh, Otherwise, fact, we will be like fact, this. Yes. In fact, it's uh, our priority uh, uh, in our committee with the Special Committee on Morale and Rehabilitation. Yes, sir, kasi so, po, magbubukas na, yung, magbubukas na yung mga mosque, magbubukas na yung bang school. Eh, pangit naman na iwan yung Philippine Army doon in, in uh, not so good uh, condition. Sana sabay-sabay pula at yun. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair. Recognize uh, Commanding General, Philippine Army. Thank you, uh, Your Honors, Mr. Chair. An amount of uh, 188.16 million pesos was funded uh, to this project to establish the, the, the uh, or develop the camp in uh, Marawi. Uh, this is to support the construction of facilities for the infantry brigade there. That's one or third the infantry brigade in connection with the commitment of the President for the construction and rehabilitation of military camps in Marawi City. This was already provided uh, last 2019, actually, but the Philippine Army offered the said project for this continuance in compliance with uh, uh, DBM uh, resolution. Sir, so, can you, can you uh, resubmit the same uh, before this committee? Yes, sir. Thank I will you, do sir. that, sir. Thank you, sir. So, excuse me, Sir Dr. Lito. I forgo na talaga ninyo yung plano dati na maglagay ng kampo doon sa Marawi mismo. Aside from the brigade, mayroong high ground doon sa, sa city proper mismo na pinaplanong gawing kampo. That's already for gun. Wala na yun. Kasama pa? Uh, uh, I think that has not been uh, discarded yet. Dahil uh, the plan of the president is that meron tayo doon talaga sa loob kasi yung brigade dito sa May Hill, malayo sa city yun eh. Ang gusto niya ano, is magkaroon tayo ng presence doon sa loob na yon para hindi makapasok yung mga gustong pumasok. Uh, there is this 10 hectare land that uh, we were trying to procure or appropriate uh, from the civilians pero hindi ako alam kung hindi ko alam kung nabayad na nabayaran na natin yung mga taong yung mga civilian doon pero nandoon yung dating if you can uh, recall this yung yung titsura ng ano doon ng picture of din of Marawi pero doon old uh, si, uh, city hall na inabandon nila na yun ang gusto nating i-develop kasi mataas yun overlooking the city ah talagang strategic yun sir overlooking yun kita kita yeah. mo buong Marawi yeah. pati yung buong Likla no nakikita mo kung nandoon yeah. ka sa taas noon so, tuloy pa pala yun. Nah, that, that's good news. So, so sir, we, we are now uh, talking of two sites or this, this this one is the same? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. We are talking of two sites. So one which of will... here and yes. one a small camp due to my loob ng uh, city. So, which would now be uh, fully utilized by the brigade? The, the, the hilltop side, site or the site uh, being referred to a while ago by the commanding general? So, alin po yung 158 million? Mr. Chair, ang gamit ng, uh, ng brigade ngayon is yung old uh, site nila doon sa hilltop, yung muka na pag pumasok ka ng, uh, ng uh, Marawi, yun ang nakikita. Near the bridge, so, sir, yung bayan? But the, 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 the site that uh, I and the chairman has been uh, discussing was another site inside, inside uh, Marawi. So, so, sir, which will be developed uh, finally uh, once we address the 158 million budgetary requests? Hindi naman pwede sa pagatiin sa... You will, you will just use one site and, pre and, and anticipate that the other site not utilized will be uh, occupied by civilians. Uh, Your Honor, sir. The, uh, 
188.16 million I have mentioned earlier, sir. This will this is intended for the establishment of the 10.2 hectares of land in that part of Marawi City. Hindi yung hindi but yung sir, the, the the old site or the hilltop site? The not the old site, sir. The old site is yung current location ng brigade ngayon. Yung 1.8 million doon po sa plan natin na so you intend to transfer eventually? Um, we we can develop it as a camp, sir. Because it uh, it is on a hilltop. Uh, it stands about 788 meters above sea level elevation, and offers a view of the entire city and the uh, entire lake, sir, which makes it ideal for a uh, military camp. As I as I understand, Mr. Chairman, they intend to relocate. To, uh, to the hilltop side. Not, not, not actually relocate uh, Sir Tolente, no? uh, Your Honor. It's only a new one. Maybe if occupy nila ng isang battalion nila or whatever, but under the brigade. Yung brigade nila, as is na yun, yung sa Signal Hill. Yung sinasabi natin na bagong uh, bagong uh, kampo na gagawin, nasa heart of the city talaga yun, yung overlooking pinakamataas na portion ng poblasyon ng syudad. Nandun yun, yung very strategic yun. And, and right now, uh, Mr. Chairman, there are no civilian occupants of this uh, new site, the overlooking site. Or is this the one uh, pressed with some informal settlement uh, issues? Well, well, may klima sa so ngayon, sir, medyo na after the 2017, na, naalis na rin natin yung wala na rin tao doon. So, there, there, it used to be occupied in, in the past, pero ngayon wala na po, sir. Thank you, General. I, I hope we can get your uh, budgetary request uh, before the end of this hearing. If you can do that, uh, I think my my question was already uh, addressed. Can I proceed to another question, Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, go ahead. But before you continue, Senator Tolentino, I would like to advise everyone that this is a working uh, um, meeting. Kung may pagkain na kayo dyan, please, ganda kayo kumain. Uh, yung wala naman, uh, memorize mo na, memorize. Kung wala pa kayong pagkain dyan. <laughs> inarni ito, inarni ito ha. Inarni ito. Kung wala pa, memorize mo na. Pag meron, kain. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead, uh, Sutor Tolentino. I almost forgot my next question. Uh, uh, this is something to do with, uh, siguro Secretary Lorenzana, before you have your lunch. I, I have been thinking a lot about the ROTC program. Uh, there were efforts before that it will be part of the K plus 12. There were efforts before that uh, CHET would be of help. Uh, and that was four years ago. So I'm still thinking uh, what has transpired? What do we expect? Uh, even if a full declaration of face-to-face -face classes would be uh, uh, Sure. Give and go signal in tranches. So what do we expect? Kasi parang, parang nakalimutan na ng DepEd uh, or, or was something needed uh, aside from legislation? Because I heard before that just a memorandum of agreement with, between the DND and DepEd would suffice. So where are we now, sir? Uh, we have been batting for the uh, for the passage again for the return of the OTC program in the colleges. Now, ang idea namin dito is uh, we target already the K, uh, K, K 11, grade 11 and 12. That is parang, if you compare it to the uh, score system of other countries, and that's how it's middle school. Eh. It is a transition between uh, Elementary to going to full high school in the long town, and it's called the middle school, uh, grade 11 and 12. Now, the beauty of this targeting there is that uh, natin ang nine, more than 98% of our youths will undergo the ROTC. Kasi not everybody who graduates from, uh, from elementary or K-12 will go to college. <laughs> Pag hindi nagpunta sa college siya, nanantuhin yung ROTC natin, then we missed a lot of uh, kids. I think uh, there are only seven, seven uh, K-12 graduates uh, out of 10 will go to college. Kung doon lang tayo sa kalkulisyo mag-concentrate ng ating uh, ROTC, yung nga, may miss natin yung marami. 
pati pre-target it sa, dito sa 2011 and 12, makuha na natin yan. And then the advanced ROTC, doon natin ilagay sa college. Sila na yung uh, parang trainer natin sa mga ROTC. Now, we have bills, I think they have bills sa uh, past, uh, we bills sa um, filed in uh, the house. Uh, Ilan ko kung meron tayo dito sa, 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 sa Senate. But, uh, meron, sa bill, meron, meron. Uh, hindi naman uh, malakad, uh, Mr. Chair, Chairman. Mr. Chair, uh, whatever happened to that uh, uh, initiative that this would just entail an interagency MOA between uh, the Department of National Defense, the DepEd, and uh, even the CHED? So it, is it still in the exploratory stage or uh, is uh, that Ed stonewalling or is it Chad stonewalling because of uh, the presence of some uh, schools affiliated with, I will not mention the word, uh, what, what is the real reason, uh, oh. the chairman? Uh, medyo nakaligtaan natin ito, Mr. Chair, dahil nagka-pandemic tayo. I think uh, marami ng discussion ito noon, noong 2019. 2020 hanggang ngayon, eh, medyo uh, i-put it on the, the back burner. Uh, we'll, uh, look, we, will we will make a report, Mr. Chair, about uh, the development, the up, uh, progress of the ROTC uh, program. Thank you, Vice. Just to inform, Sir Dr. Lentino, we already had uh, one committee meeting chaired by uh, uh, Senator uh, Winget Salian. And uh, I'm sure I was with uh, Senator Nancy that time. Nung pinagalitan ako nung isang student leader na taga UP. Uh, <laughs> you remember that, Senator Nancy? <laughs> uh, one meeting lang, one meeting. And then after Rhodes, uh, wala na. Uh, yun ang status niya, parliamentary status. Thank you. So, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Chairman, I hope we can uh, still do something uh, uh, as we prepare for face-to-face -face classes, perhaps in, in limited uh, areas, especially those uh, colleges and universities or uh, K plus 12 schools maintained by friendly LGUs, those LGUs, those uh, those governors or mayors who are now reservists can probably help us. Uh, and they are more than willing. Those areas uh, near military camps, they are also willing. So we can perhaps do this gradually, incrementally, until such a stage that we can reach a critical threshold level na, na marami na, di ba? So, uh, Senator De La Rosa and I are, are willing to to sit down and uh, perhaps uh, iron out some details. And if you can provide us with with the names, with the agencies or who are really stonewalling, we can directly ask them why they are against. But I, I am sure there are governors out there uh, who are now in the reserve force who will support this initiative, uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Chairman, for example, sa Bintarina, there was this uh, pilot project that we implemented uh, two years ago or three years ago na gagawin mandatory yung ROTC sa mga state universities and colleges. I think we had uh, 100 uh, of those schools uh, Hindi ko na alam kung ano nangyari. Uh, do you have an uh, update, uh, Jim Ustav? O oh, wala pa rin, hindi pa na-implement yun. Uh, so it's in the planning stage pa rin hanggang ngayon, hindi pa na-implement. But that, that was the idea. Kasi pwede naman natin i-mandate yung ROTC sa mga state universities and colleges. If we can start that in uh, find out, uh, siguro mag tama sabi mo, uh, Mr. Senator, uh, it will uh, snowball kung maganda yung, yung handling nitong uh, pilot projects sa state universities and colleges. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we hope we can accomplish that within the next uh, few few weeks or months. Uh, my last question before you have your lunch, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, and again, this is part of my light questioning. I read something this morning that the good secretary, Mr. Chairman, uh, mentioned something about another country that prevented us, the Philippines, 
from uh, reviewing, revisiting the mutual defense treaty uh, with the United States. And I will not I will not hesitate to mention the country because it's now in the broadsheet. So where are we now, uh, Mr. Secretary, in so far as the review of the, the mutual defense treaty? And what would be our anticipated upgrade in so far as the, uh, the outcome of the review is concerned? Would this be, mean uh, the enhancement of the enhanced EDCA that would uh, provide for more prolonged uh, rotation, or how do you term that? Uh, a more a semblance of permanency in, in, in terms of uh, the uh, uh, positioning of uh, equipment and perhaps personnel that would address our uh, disaster needs, uh, uh, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chairman, yes, um, in one of my talks uh, in a forum the other day is that I, a divorce that uh, when I first brought the idea of uh, revisiting the MDT, I think that was in 2018, uh, yung Chinese ambassador, and he uh, uh, came to me, was up kami, sabi niya, nakikiusap siya, Ni Ramon, they are not actually preventing us, but he requested na kung pwede huwag nang galawin yung MDT. And uh, I uh, asked him why. Kasi sabi niya, any revision of the MDT uh, would be construed by the Chinese as uh, actions containing them. Ayun, pinipigilan daw natin yung Chinese. Uh, hindi ko naman sa channel, but I just smiled at him. But uh, that, that, that uh, will not prevent us from uh, looking into the, um, going back to the MDT of 1951 para itingnan natin kung talaga bang relevant pa hanggang ngayon. And that is my uh, number one ag argument, Mr. Chairman, because yung MDT na 1951 was signed, uh, wala pa itong mga problema ang iba eh. Ang problema lang noon is uh, communism. Uh, that it, This was signed during the Korean War at communism ang kalaban eh. And everybody was watching uh, how the communists will progress in Southeast Asia. Kasi nakuha na nila yung Vietnam or whatever. No? So, I enumerated some of the problems that uh, are facing us that are no longer the traditional uh, traditional uh, security issues. Kasi ang ating uh, kanon, pinaghandaan natin, is a uh, shooting war between uh, us and others. Yun ang, yun ang purpose talaga ng MDT. Attack. Pag inatake tayo ng uh, kalaban, tutulong yung US. Kung sila naman ang atakihin, kasama tayo. That is the main meat of the MDT. But now, sabi ko, meron tayong mga problema sa terrorism, transnational crimes, drugs, uh, climate change, effect of climate change, uh, effect of automation. Now, hindi natin alam ito, hindi pinag-uusapan ito, but machine will replace people in, in the future. And about 80 million of, our, of, of the people in South Asia will lose their jobs. So, ano gagawin na? That's a security problem. So, ito nga iniisip. I, I, I also suggested an idea that siguro baguhin natin yung agreement na yan to address all these things, hindi lang yung kalaban. Dahil sabi ko, mukhang wala na ba ngayong mag-gugira eh. Wala nang gira ng shooting war katulad ng Korean War or, um, or World War II. Dahil of the, because of the sophisticated equipment by both sides, eh mukhang walang malalalo dyan eh. Parehong talo. Talo pareho yung mag-gugira. Dahil they will expend a lot of resources, killing a lot of their people. So, yun ang, ang, yun ang, ano ko, yun ang aking, um, yun ang aking, uh, um, uh, ang aking premise, that uh, it's this with the basic, it, uh, okay naman yung mga Amerikano to look at it again and come up with some proposals on how to, uh, to, to make it better to suit the situations now, yung prevailing situation now. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chairman, the reason why I ask that is that uh, uh, if there, there will be a need for an upgrade because of this review, it would entail the participation of the Senate 
because the Senate would be involved in the ratification if there will be a, an MDT uh, part two, version, version two, uh, MDT 2.0. So we hope, I, I think you're correct, that uh, it has to be reviewed and uh, include dif a different scenario. But uh, the reason why I ask that question is just to lay down the basis for my uh, follow-up question, which probably would, would, would surprise uh, some members of the defense community here uh, present, especially those uh, in your think tank or policy uh, decision-making uh, group. I, 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 I was able to uh, stumble on an existing treaty, unfamiliar with the, with the DFA family. I was surprised. And uh, the, my, my staff provided you a copy. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to have the, the records reflect that I provided Secretary Lorenzana a copy of a treaty dated 8 September 1954. And uh, I think this should be a group, this, uh, a starting point for your discussion. You'll be surprised, uh, Mr. Chairman. We were always looking at the Mutual Defense Treaty when, in fact, there is another treaty. It's called the Manila Pact. The Southeast Asia Collective Defense Treaty, uh, 8 September 1954. Nakalimutan na ng Department of Foreign Affairs. And when I asked them, uh, they, they just sent a, a young and experienced lawyer to explain, and I was not satisfied. So perhaps we should study this further. And I, and I uh, invoke this so that the military establishment can likewise study. Ito po yung laman. In 1954, the Philippines entered into a, uh, a treaty called the so Southeast Asia Collective Defense Treaty, the umbrella. And that treaty created an organization. It's called SIATO. SIATO is the counterpart of NATO. The difference, the only difference is that NATO has a, has a standby force. SIATO uh, does not have. Eventually, in 1970, Middle 70s or 77, uh, Seattle was dissolved. Seattle was dissolved. But my proposition is this. You dissolve the product, but you do, you do not dissolve the mother organization, the mother treaty. What was dissolved was the product because of the end of the Vietnam War, the Seattle. But the mother treaty is, is still in effect in force. In fact, I have flashed on the screen, Mr. Chairman, uh, a the website of the State Department. It states, Mr. Chairman, that's the box that the box type, the Southeast Asia Def Collective Defense Treaty with protocol. The protocol is the Seattle, the child, the child, the byproduct, although dissolved, but the mother is still there. It it's it states here. Uh, take a look at the uh, box, uh, red box that uh, the the note here is that the Collective Defense Treaty remains in force. It is still valid. And who are the members of the Southeast Asia Collective Defense Treaty? I have here the treaty itself. I, my, my staff gave the good secretary a copy. Who are the members? The following are the members. Uh, you have the Philippines. You have New Zealand. You have Pakistan. They withdrew. Pakistan withdrew. You have the United States. You have Australia, France withdrew in 1973, Pakistan withdrew in 1973. You have Australia, you have Thailand, and the United Kingdom. And incidentally, United Kingdom, New Zealand, and the United States participated in that maritime exercise we had in Mindoro two days ago. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because perhaps there is a need to remind our uh, treaty partners that there is still an existing treaty which would require them to come into defense, collective defense of the Philippines in case something happens. And that's part of the treaty. If you are secretary, if you look at the, the provision of the Manila Pact, the, the, the exact word is this. Affected, if, if any party is affected or threatened, by any fact or situation which might endanger the peace of the area, 
the party shall consult immediately in order to agree on the measures which should be taken for the common defense, unquote. So it just means to show that aside from the mutual defense treaty, there is still another treaty which we have forgotten. Forgotten by the Department of Foreign Affairs, although the repository, the depository of the treaty is supposed to be the FA Manila. So take a look at that box. I still maintain, while Seattle has been uh, abolished or dissolved, the mother treaty is still there. The mother produced the child treaty, Seattle. The solution, the solution of the child treaty will not entail the automatic dissolution of the mother treaty. It should have been the other way around. So it is still part of the State Department's website. They recognize this. I'm saying this, uh, Mr. Secretary, is that perhaps in your future conversations with your counterparts, you can perhaps mention this, that there is still a Southeast Asia Collective Defense Treaty, although the purpose of the Seattle before was communism. So question here is that uh, intrusion into our waters by foreign, foreign uh, another country, which is supposed to be a communist, would that not be uh, interpreted as uh, the a spread of communism, which would entail the invocation of, of this treaty. So just for a something for your uh, policy making group or your think tank group, take a look at this treaty. We are not just banking on the MDT or the EDCA. We have another we have another uh, uh, treaty armor to bank on. But the DFA has yet to provide me another another uh, written reply, but I maintain, uh, Mr. Chairman, that the Southeast Asia Collective Defense Treaty is still in force because the treaty itself provides that the, the treaty is enforceable indefinitely unless all the parties withdraw. And the United States has not yet withdrawn. The Philippines has not yet withdrawn. Australia has not yet withdrawn. Ireland has not yet withdrawn. So there's still a treaty. And this is a multilateral treaty involving several countries. The Mutual Defense Treaty, my, my, my previous uh, my predicate question, it just involves the United States and, and the Philippines. But here we have several countries that can help us. So my, my purpose in raising this, uh, Mr. Chairman, is to allow the good secretary, knowing that... Uh, he has a lot of legacy to live, to really th think about this and perhaps when he meets his counterpart from New Zealand, from the United States, from Australia, from the United Kingdom and Thailand, he can remind them that there is still a Southeast Asia Collective Defense Treaty which is valid in effect and effective, but perhaps slightly forgotten because of the dissolution of the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization or the SIATO. In lamang po, Mr. Chairman, and if the good secretary would reply, uh, perhaps he can uh, think about this. And that's just a an additional uh, ingredient as he looks forward to the continued review of the MDT uh, as a process. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, if the, the good secretary will reply before I... Yeah, uh, thank you, Senator Dino. Uh, uh, I'd, like, I'd like to thank the uh, good senator for bringing this out. And, uh, um, frankly, I don't know that this ex existed. Nobody has told me before. <clears throat> no, no, it's good that uh, this came out. Uh, I'll have some something to discuss with my counterparts again, especially so that uh, a lot of the, the, uh, the countries here, uh, I have... Uh, Speaking uh, relationship with the uh, defense ministers, Australia, France, New Zealand, um, 
Thailand, I have not talked to, I have not spoken to him. And I think Kingdom, I spoke to, to him also. So this is very good. Uh, maganda ito na naumabas ito. And find out uh, from them how do they consider this uh, treaty. Uh, maraming salamat po, Mr. Senator and uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, even if I'm wrong, I think uh, it might merit another triple M. Uh, that's just a joke. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have further questions with the good secretary. I think the uh, commendation is improper uh, for a job well done, especially in so far as modernizing our armed forces. Uh, no further questions for the DND team. Uh, maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Tolentino. Uh, the CGPA, are you taking note of the, the happy hour ni Senator Tolentino? Yes, sir. I'm uh, taking note of... Uh... <laughs> what the good senator has uh, mentioned, sir. Thank you, thank you for that. Before I turn over the floor to Senator Nancy, Nancy Binay, a uh, quick question, lang, sir, Joel uh, Lorenzana, sir. Yung uh, takbo ba natin ay talagang uh, limited to the army lang? Uh, Organization ng CAFGO? Uh, Mr. Chair, ma marami na, meron na rin yung Navy, at saka yung Air Force, yung kanilang uh, affiliated the reserve unit. CAFGO, sir. CAFGO. Citizens Armed Forces Geographical Units. CAFGO ba? Yung SISDF noon. SISDF noon. BISDU pa noon. BISDU. Di naging ICSDF. Di naging CAFGO. Yes, sir. Meron na? Mer meron na rin ano pala, uh, Mr. Chairman. Meron na rin uh, maritime CAFGO. Ngayon yung under ng Navy, hindi lang, hindi lang Army ang meron yan. I don't know if the Air Force will also have theirs. Uh, they will not do not have the uh, uh, CAFGO yet. Pero the bulk of the uh, CAFGO, about 68,000 people, nasa Army. Because sila yung ginagamit natin. Yun ang ating force multipliers sa mga remote areas. Hmm. I'm, uh, I'm saying this dahil... Uh, Nakikita ko, baka mamaya we can be able to harness some funds to buy, uh, to procure uh, maliliit na fishing vessels na pwedeng uh, i-deploy natin sa West Philippines eh? at uh, pakakargahan natin ng uh, ating mga naval CAFGO na iharap natin doon sa Chinese uh, uh, naval militia. Uh, pwede siguro yung mga ganong idea para... Para naman masatisfy yung ating mga kababayan na sila nagsasabi na wala tayong ginagawa diyan sa ating mga 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 kababayan na mangingisda na hindi na makalapit doon. So papapangisdain natin doon yung mga naval kapgo natin. Hindi natin silang ipapalayag doon. Hindi naman siguro sila magkabanggaan siguro doon. Uh, I think uh, they will respect each other kung nakita sila ng mga Chinese uh, militia na nandun sa area. Uh, how about that, uh, Secretary Ronsaro, sir? Mr. Chair, that's a very good idea. Pero uh, I think we need a lot of resources. Dahil uh, yung mag-emitting barko yan ng mga, ng mga maritime kafko natin, eh hindi basta-basta barko. It should be still hold. Kasi kung yung mga, mga katig-katig lang gamitin dyan, ang madaling masira yun kasi nga malakas ng alon dyan eh. During this time of the year, eh hindi makatagal doon sa area. Balikan lang yan, mga siguro, couple of days, three days lang, balik na naman sa, sa home port. So, uh, it, it, this is a, a good topic to discuss. In, uh, ang problema natin dito is the resources to support this kind of endeavor, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you for that, sir. Uh, I hope we can find some uh, funds to, kahit na yung malaki-laki kunti na, na fishing vessel, uh, hindi naman natin pwedeng harapan yung kanyang sayo sa mga Chinese, no? malalaki masyado yun. Yung that can withstand the weather lang doon sa area. Uh, how I wish, makadeploy tayo ng ganun. Thank you, sir. Uh, from here, I would like to turn over to the floor to Senator Nancy Binay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just have a super short questions, Mr. Chairman. Para ho, fa para ho sa OCD? OCE? OCD. Ah, OCD. OCD. Okay. The uh, Office of Civil Defense. Yes. Nandiyan po ba sila, Mr. Chairman? Yusik Halad? Uh, uh, is uh, Yusik Halad here? Uh, and then online? Okay. Yes, I can see the Yusik Halad. 
Ah, uh, itatanong ko lang ho, um dahil di ba yung OCD you're in charge of um uh, well making us our country disaster ready and re- resilient. And um kung matatandaan niyo ho nung nagkaroon ng bagyo sa Region 2, um parang nagkulang ho tayo sa air assets and in fact, um uh, di ba yung mga bangka sa Burnham Park, yung Swan doon biglang uh dinala sa Isabela para makatulong dun sa relief ops. Um, nasa na ba tayo in terms of our equipment for disaster response? Thank you very much. Yoshikala, Yoshikala, you have the floor, sir. You have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Chair and uh, Congress uh, Senator. Uh, please know, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, the resources that we utilize in disaster response mostly are resources of the different uh, member agencies. These are the uniform services, the armed forces of the Philippines, Philippine National Police, Bureau Fire, and Philippine Coast Guard mostly. There are other civilian government agencies that have uh, some assets that we can utilize in disaster response. So the, when it comes to capali- uh, capability building, the responsibility lies with those different agencies composing the NDRMC, Mr. Chair. And um, yung OCD ba walang inventory of our assets for disaster response? Uh, we have some, uh, Madam Senator, but uh, mostly uh, these are communication system because the job of OCD uh, is mainly on uh, coordinating and providing command and control. So yon ang uh, ano natin, yon ang focus ng capacity building, capability building ng Office of Civil Defense, not on the acquisitions of response assets like uh, rescue boats, uh, rescue vehicles, and air assets. Because, as I said, those are the responsibilities of the different agencies that the NDRRMC uh, deploys and utilizes for disaster response. Okay. Pero, uh, can you submit to the committee a listing? Kasi as part of your uh, function as uh, your coordinating body, um, dapat alam nyo ho kung saan tayo magtatap ng resources. For example, kung kailangan ng air assets, um, sino from government and from private sector that we can utilize? Wala ho ba kayong ganong database? Well, uh, we have partners from the private sector and uh, we, uh, like for example, uh, the private sector have their own groups that uh, that uh, becomes our counterpart. Uh, I can cite the PDRF. Uh, this is a foundation composed of uh, big corporations, and uh, usually our coordination is channeled through this PDRF. And um, for the inventory of resources of uh, the government agencies or uh, government response units, we have those, uh, Madam Senator. And uh, what we do uh, in times of disaster is we activate the response cluster. The response cluster is composed of all member agencies of the NDRMC. And we also include our partners from the civilian uh, sector, the PDRF. And it is there that we uh, coordinate. These uh, members of the response cluster sends representatives to our operation center. So the coordination is uh, very fast. Uh, we don't have to write letters or call the mother agency. We just coordinate with the representatives in the response cluster. So uh, we have we utilize the uh, air assets of the armed forces of the Philippines, even the Philippine Coast Guard. You. You said, uh, Hala, yung air assets uh, agencies have, of course, the AFP has, has, have C-130s. They have smaller aircraft. Uh, 
like the C-295 and uh, helicopters, we utilize them uh, when needed. We also utilize the fixed wing assets of uh, the Philippine Coast Guard, the sea assets of the Philippine Navy and the uh, Philippine Coast Guard. So we have those, uh, the inventory of those assets, uh, uh, Madam Senator. And um, Lisa Kalad, ito ho bang mga air assets na to, ano yan, uh, evenly distributed uh, in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, or lahat ho yan more or less nakakonsentrate dito sa Luzon? Well, I think uh, the Armed Forces of the Philippines are is in a better position to uh, inform us on that, uh, uh, Madam Senator. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I request um, sino ba? From a Yes. A a uh, anybody from the AAP? Uh, Secretary Luis, I recognize. Mr. Chair, uh, the, uh, the way we, we respond to disaster, once there is a disaster, kahit paparating pa lang, activated na yung ating NDRRMC. Ano yan, the chairman of the NDRRMC, vice chairman ko dyan, si Secretary Anyo, and the SWD. And uh, ang... The air assets, to be, uh, if there is any need for uh, any assets, either vessels, trucks, or aircraft, sagot mo yan ng EFP dahil kasama, kasama kami dyan sa NDRRMC. Yung OCD, sila lang yung uh, parang uh, nagkapatakbo ng day-to-day -day activities ng uh, NDRMC. And they have units, they have field offices all over the country. Mayroong OCD-1 sa, 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 sa Northern Luzon, 3 dito. It corresponds with the regional uh, uh, configuration of the country. So, as far as uh, assets is concerned, kanya kanyang gamit ng assets yan. When the DFW, they will distribute the, the relief for goods, gagamitin nila yung uh, kanilang asset. Na kung kulang, they can tap into the assets of the AFP. Yun po ang ganun yan. Yun, yun ang uh, system mo yan. And it has been working for uh, beautifully for the past several years. Okay, and siguro, Secretary Lorenzana, bahagi ba ng AFP modernization itong um, capability natin for disaster response? Uh, Mr. Chairman, hello eh. Uh, it is not specifically for disaster response, but uh, it's part of the uh, mission that is uh, given to the uh, to the armed forces. Katulad ng pagbili natin ng mga transport helicopters, Kasama na yan, it's ADR, uh, uh, humanitarian assistance and uh, disaster relief. Yun ang kasama dyan eh. Uh, evacuation, resupply. Kasama po yan. Pati yung mga barko natin sa mga sa Navy, eh, ganun din ang, uh, ang purpose niyan eh. Even the uh, army trucks, ganun din. So it is, it, is, it is very easy to to migrate yung mission nila sa our forces of fighting the enemy to assistance on uh, that during disasters. Hindi na po natin kailangan siguro ma-modernize natin ng for, purely for, uh, modern, for uh, disaster relief. But uh, pwede naman natin isali yung disaster relief operations sa ating mga binibiling mga equipment. So, siguro, Secretary Lynn, sana para mas, uh, kumbaga mas sulit yung pagbili natin. Kumbaga parang nakaretrofit din siya for disaster operation kung, kail kung kakailanganin. Okay. Uh, Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Senator. Kasi yung mga Navy natin, may mga, mga rescue kanila, this, this are actually uh, configured for rescue operations. Yun na mga ating mga helicopters, ay, meron din tayong mga uh, gadgets dyan kung kailangan natin mag-retrieve mag ng mga tao na sa, na sa tubig. We also have some capabilities there. And... Uh, uh, I'm, uh, I can assure you, uh, Madam Senator, that uh, our uh, aircraft, especially the helicopters, are really uh, designed for for this uh, for this uh, purpose for disaster relief operations. Okay, that, that's good to know, Secretary Lorenzana. And then for for my last question, dal alam ko alauna na. Um, siguro um, gusto ko lang mo malaman kung paano naman yung vaccination rate natin. Um, sa DND family at sa AFP. Siyempre, uh, uh, alam naman natin, uh, you are all considered as parang 
part of the frontliners. Mr. Chairman, I think uh, the, the vaccinated, total vaccinated is already uh, 130,520, which is uh, about uh, 90%? More than 90% of the armed forces of the Philippines. Uh, the first dose, the second uh, dose is... Uh, yung, uh, this is of the updated message. Yung first dose... 155 kasama si Bigyan employees. 155,063 first dose. Uh, Asama na yung mga civilian employees dito na uh, palaging nag opisina Yung nakatanggap na ng complete uh, full vaccinated uh, with second dose is 97,223. For the uniform personnel, this is already a substantial about 60%? 60%, 60 of... 70% uh, uh, of the entire armed forces. Ngayon... Uh, Ang naging problema namin dito, Mr. Chairman, Madam Senator, is that uh, nung nabigyan kami ng AstraZeneca, eh, itinurok namin lahat yun. Ginawa namin first dose lahat dahil uh, mag-expire na yung uh, vaccine. So we are now waiting for the for another batch of uh, AstraZeneca para magkaroon ng second uh, uh, dose yung ibang mga nabigyan ng AstraZeneca. So. Okay, thank you, Ed. Uh, Doon ho ba sa veterans, uh, may ano ho ba dyan? Uh, COVID, de dedicated COVID bed? Meron po. Meron po. Meron kami dedicated. I think almost one half of the veterans hospital is dedicated for uh, COVID. In fact, uh, parami silang pasinti dyan ngayon. I think we have almost 100 uh, COVID patients in uh, the veterans hospital. Okay. Ah, yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Lorenzana. Marami salamat, uh, Senator Nancy. And uh, before uh, Senator Tolentino will move for the approval of this uh, budget, oh, may, may, may tatanong pa ako ito. Sandali. Uh, may tatanong pa ako. Uh, government arsenal, sir? Is he around? Government arsenal? Abel, are you here? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir. Uh, uh, the director of the arsenal is here, Mr. Chairman. Uh, retired Major General de Pacaquibo. Sir, is, is, uh, is this a... Uh, the Pacaquibo, sir, 84? Huh? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is uh, uh, Acting Director uh, Arnold de Pacaquibo. Uh, yes, sir. For the personal. Uh, ikaw pala, ikaw pala, sir. Uh, may tanong lang ako, sir. I just, I'm just curious about the uh, capability ng ating uh, uh, government arsenal. Uh, tanong ko lang, as far as uh, ammunitions for small firearms. Small firearms, alam ba? Anong tanong ko kayo about the shell? Alam mo, 9mm uh, ammunition. Yung shell niya, sir, kayo bang gumagawa? O bumibili kayo? Sir, uh, as, as uh, per your query, sir, uh, ginagawa natin, sir, yung shell ng mga bala natin for different uh, sizes. Uh, binibili natin yung uh, uh, metallic raw material nito and uh, we have uh, machines and equipment that can form the shell from 9mm, 45mm, uh, for caliber 45, uh, 5.56 and 7.62. Yan ang mga capabilities, sir, for the small arms. Thank you, sir. Very good. Uh, about powder? Uh, yung powder, sir, uh, we, we, we had that capability, pero it stopped uh, mga three years ago. Eh. Uh, it stopped for so many reasons, pero rene-revive re natin, sir, because we still have the, the capability. Uh, para nag-stop yan, sir, because yung, there were, I think, uh, as per query, there were, there were some years ago na Medyo uh, uh, mahirap kumuha ng uh, raw material. Uh, but, uh, right, but I think uh, 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 seasonal kasi ito eh. Uh, right now, no, uh, I'm, 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 we have actually plans to revive this uh, explosive uh, division I mean, for manufacture of powder. So you mean to say, sir, the technology is still there, but it just stopped uh, producing uh, uh, powder. Pag anytime, kung meron kayong, mabigyan kayo ng uh, 
uh, raw materials pwede na kayo mag uh, produce ulit ng uh, powder uh, yes correct? sir that's correct sir in fact ang goal namin na uh, when we plan to revive it uh, i-re-revive na namin yung equipment to a the, the more modern equipment uh, para to, para makahabol sa technology in the manufacture of the powder how about the heads sir heads yung projectile Oh, kasama rin yun, sir. Actually, presently capable tayo niya, sir. We are manufacturing that. Uh, currently, medyo uh, because of uh, maintenance of equipment and machines, medyo mababa yan. Kaya at certain times, medyo bumibili kami. But uh, once na-revive namin yung mga machines namin, uh, continuous, continuous lagi na kami na manufacture natin, sir, pati yung head, yung mga lead. How about primer, sir? You can go dito or bibili ka we to include primer sir uh, yung na, na, may setback kami sa primer uh, primer machine uh, primer machine namin but again uh, yun din uh, because we know that uh, kailang, kailangan makumpleto namin to 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 that, to, uh, to achieve yung self to self uh, sufficiency talaga sa small arms so medyo nag nagstall kami doon but uh, we are bringing it back sir yes uh, i mean to say nagstall kayo ngayon pero previously you are capable. You, you've been producing primers. Uh, am yes, I correct? Sir, have, that's correct, sir. We have been producing our, our, our own primers for all our small arms ammunition. So it's, it's nice to hear it from you, sir. Well, uh, uh, actually, kung talagang may balik niyo yung capability na yan, we can be uh, self-sufficient pagdating sa small arms uh, ammunition pag uh, ganun pala. Dahil nga... Uh, uh, problema natin problema talaga yan uh, sa, sa PNP pa lang eh, ang uh, bala ng small arms palaging doon binibili sa mga civilians so I think uh, kung uh, papalaguin pa natin itong inyong uh, arsenal eh baka pwede na kayo mag mag supply sa lahat pati na yung uh, civilian na uh, uh, law enforcement agencies kapag uh, kompleto na kayo uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I, I confirm that. In fact, part of uh, mandate namin is to to supply even the the uh, PNP and the Coast Guard and lahat ng mga national uh, law enforcement agencies natin. Ah, thank you, sir. Uh, salamat at uh, mayro pala tayong capability na ganun. Dahil uh, uh, all I know is palagi natin nagre-rely sa private sector pagdating sa ganong requirements, ammunition requirements. So I encourage na habang ikaw nga dyan, sir, alam kong magaling ka, magaling ka sa mga plano, pagandahin mo yung government arsenal natin and uh, we will try to uh, provide you with funds pag mag-request kayo para pagandahin mo yung uh, ating government arsenal for uh, natin alam what will happen in the uh, in the future. Kinakailangan talaga natin yan na uh, self-sufficient tayo pagdating sa ammunition. So, gumawa ka na programa dyan, sir. Then, uh, sabi ito na ito na din, din. And, uh, hanapan namin ang paraan dito kasi importante talaga yan. Kailangan natin yan. Thank you, sir. Uh, di pa kakibo. Uh, thank you for yeah, answering uh, uh, my questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Secretary Ruiz Sana, sir. Uh, you have to Mr. Chairman, I'm glad that you brought up the uh, government arsenal dahil uh, ang tagal na namin gustong uh, i-improve itong arsenal natin. I think uh, it is composed yung ating arsenal sa Limay is uh, ilang hectare yun? Uh, eight hectares? The, uh, the area of Limay Bataan is about eight hectares at uh, napakalit lang yung na-utilize. Uh, ano, na, 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 Congressman Garcia of uh, Bataan is uh, pushing up a bill in, uh, in the uh, Plover House para may improve, magawin natin parang industrial, uh, uh, military industrial complex, uh, defense industrial complex yung uh, Limay. And uh, maganda yung plano because we will, uh, we will invite uh, locators, yung mga gumagawa ng mga uh, ammunition, powder, everything, para dandyan sila and uh, they can buy from them. Kasi ang nakikita ko, Mr. Chairman, hindi yung long term natin dyan is that we cannot sustain a government arsenal where we uh, produce the uh, 
firearms and ammunition on our own. Dahil, uh, we are not actually designed, our, uh, the armed forces, not uh, yung JA, is not actually designed to, to do that. Ano? <coughs> ang, ang magiging ano dito, because uh, we were trying to compare uh, magkano yung uh, cost ng ammunition na ginagawa ng uh, ano, ng arsenal at saka cost ng uh, sa labas. And kung, kung konti lang diferensya, kaminsan mas mura pa sa labas eh. Plus, kung uh, bibili tayo dun sa local manufacturers ng mga bala, <coughs> we can do away with the overhead natin, yung pag-maintain ng equipment, maintain ng mga tao. So, that is the long-term plan. But at the moment, wala pa naman tayong ganun. The arsenal is uh, producing about 50 million uh, small arms ammunition every year. And uh, if uh, maybe uh, if I can request that uh, the Senate also will uh, support the creation of the uh, conversion of the government of Sudan Lima to uh, to a defense industrial complex that we can develop. Para ma, ma we can also develop our self sufficiency. Yung tatao ng self uh, the self reliance program. Ayon yung bill ni uh, Congressman uh, Garcia. Ay merong kaakibat na pera doon eh. I think uh, it's about uh, 3 billion for the next uh, 6 years para 500 million every year to develop yung infrastructures ng uh, ng GA to make it a really a uh, modern uh, manufacturing uh, hub. Thank you Mr. Chairman. So meron kami dito. Uh, I I'm, I'm not sure if this is uh, like a counterpart bill yung ni secret uh, ni Congressman Garcia. Pero kami bill na introduce dito, Special Defense Economic Zone Bill filed by uh, yours truly, Senator Ricto and Senator Angara. Uh, pariho ba yun? No? Similar, similar, Mr. Chairman. Similar. Oh, similar. Ga Gaano kalaki limay bataan natin? How, how many hectares? About 80 hectares, uh, Mr. Chairman. 8-0? 8-0. Malaki pala. So, uh, we're going to support this mission sa uh, kagaganda ng ating uh, government arsenal. Kasi, uh, uh, not for uh, economic reasons, pero for, uh, for uh, you know, survival reasons, ang niisip ko, sir, na but if these other countries will no longer uh, sell us the needed uh, uh, primer, magkaka, magkakasabihan na ba? Ayaw na magbinta sa ating primer. Ayaw magbinta ng uh, pulbura. Ano mangyari sa atin? We'll, leave, we'll go back to uh, bulos, bulos and arrow, uh, bangkaw, spear, uh, babalik sa ito pag wala natin bala or hantuhan kumbat. Uh, that's, uh, inisip ko lang survival natin uh, ng ating defense. Uh, yun lang sir, uh, maraming salamat for uh, Considering the questions. Senator Tulito, you are good, guys. Mr. Chair, dagdag lang, dagdag. Ito, binigyan ako ng bagong information dito ng mga staff ko. There's actually two companion bills, eh. Isa sa House, which is House Bill 200, at saka yung Senate Bill 1321, I think that yung hindi hawak-hawak mo kanina, yung 15, uh, 1321 na yan. So, meron na pala. Uh, I think all we have to do is to process this to become a law. And then uh, hopefully we can have this pass be, uh, before the term of the President, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes sir. Alam mo, pag matuloy ito, yung special economic, uh, uh, ano itong bill ito? Defense. Special defense economic zone bill. Kung matuloy ito, baka yung mga Sig Sauer, Yung mga ZZ, <laughs> yung mga malalaking kumpanya will be, will be encouraged yeah. to put up their own uh, uh, manufacturing plant here in uh, Limay, Bataan. Yeah. Kapag nabigyan natin yung special privilege. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a good, uh, welcome development. Kasi matagal na sila, like yung Israeli, yung Israeli weapons uh, industries, they're willing to put up uh, their own uh, manufacturing plant here in the Philippines kung meron ganito, special defense economic zone. So, uh, I hope everyone will support this uh, bill para gaganda yung ating uh, defense uh, capability. Okay. Thank you. Yan sir. Mga biro pang gusto magsalita from the resource persons. Merong gusto magsalita. Kung wala na, 
Chairman, upon instructions of the committee chairman and subject to the submission of the other uh, documents to be provided by the Philippine Army and, and the Office of the Secretary, I move for the approval of the budget of the Department of National Defense for fiscal year 2022 and its submission to the plenary. I so move, Mr. Chair. Before I act on the motion of Senator Tolentino, meron pala ko nakalimutan. Just uh, one uh, reminder, sir, for the AFP. Uh, for that DND, for that matter, and the DBM, kung nagbumulita po yung DBM ngayon, uh, balik tayo doon sa modernization. Uh, sana, uh, we will uh, work hard para maramdaman ng ating mga foot soldiers itong modernization. Dahil yung isang ordinary sundalo, na nasa baba, ang pakiramdam nila minsan, sabihin nila, ah, bininta na natin yung Port Bonifacio para mag-modernize tayo. Eh saan yung modernization na sinasabi nila? Hindi man natin maramdaman. Wala man tayo makita. Uh, sana you will work hard on this na maramdaman talaga natin mga kasundaluhan na andyan yung uh, modernization na program na gusto natin para sa kanila. Uh, sana nakikinig yung DBM rin para whatever uh, he request sana ng EAP ng DND ay they will accommodate favorably in uh, favor of the decision yun lang sir uh, with that I would like to uh, is there any uh, objection hearing none the budget of uh, DND EAP uh, DND family for that matter is uh, at this uh, committee level is hereby approved. Congratulations, Secretary Lorenzana.